Back to you good, kind you good. of funnies. Lord <laughs> of the Rings in review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing the entire Lord of the Rings extended edition trilogy. What an exciting time. We don't have much left, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming up to the end of this. Um, but as always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by Andy Cortez, Kevin Coelho, Nick Scarpino, and Elise Willems. How are y'all doing? Yeah. I'm good. good. Hanging yeah, in there. Andy. Yeah. Yeah. Again, Nick, before this, you were saying like it's been a week. It's been a, there's been a lot of stuff going on, but this mm-hmm. is the thing you've been looking forward to, and I love that we're doing it on Fridays. It does feel like a nice little gift to be able to just get to the end of the week and talk about some dope shit. You know what I mean? Absolutely, dude. This I mean again, there's nothing I like more than sitting down with my friends and and just nerding out about movies. And there's, in my opinion, and I mean this as a, a complete positive, there's nothing more nerdy than Lord of the Rings. That is fair. That you know, is I never fair. Thought ner- it always makes me nervous when Nick says he means this as a complete positive. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I would hear Nick say, I, I'm excited to talk about Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. it's and true. But I, and, but I will preface this. I will preface this. We are one. This is the second to last episode of Lord of the Rings. And I've said this before. I said at the very beginning of the first episode, I said, I am going to break with the Nick character and tell you that these movies are phenomenal. This is the real me talking. But when we're done with part two of Return of the King, I will go back to we're smearing back. this franchise. Yeah. I'm, I'm with I will shit. I'm going back to shitting Hard. on this 100 yeah. percent just know this I have it any I, honestly, other way. i'm probably gonna go back harder you know <laughs> great you gotta, ca- so you, gotta everyone, ca- you have something to look forward to you know what, going I, even harder and the worst oh. part andy i didn't even think of this is now they know all the shit so they have more ammunition <laughs> they do. Oh, it's at least, at least air we air. already <laughs> knew all this stuff just so you know like no. Nick has actually oh, read okay. all the books I'm thinking about That's going true. back. I'm thinking about going back to read the books again, just to go harder on the paint. You know, harder <laughs> wow. on the paint against this against oh, wow. this series. Okay, then. All right. Well, you can watch this show live on twitchtv slash games, where we do it every Friday. Every Tuesday, we're doing the Star Trek Kelvin verse um, in review. Next week, we're doing Star Trek Beyond, the final movie. Very yeah. exciting stuff. What franchises will we do next? We still don't know. Working on it. So tweet at me at Tim Gettys uh, for your suggestions on what we should do. Um, I've been sake, seeing a lot of them. Nolan. Got some, got well. The Honey, one's I complicated. The I know, I know, but I just want, dude. I, I've had Inception on my on my queue for Netflix for two months, and every time I see it, now Danielle's starting to like use it against me. Where she's like, "We're gonna watch Inception today," <laughs> and then she walks away, and I'm like, I just want to watch this movie." But wait, just I mean, watch it. At this point, is gonna be enough time because it doesn't sound like it's coming out till mid October. No, because right? here's the problem. Here's the problem I have though. If I watch oh, it and then I go back and watch it again, it it feels like a chore. I mean, yeah. I got I like watching these movies after I haven't seen them in like two years or three years. Because then they're, they're like I get the excitement of the newness of the movie. Like uh, I tried watching Hot Tub Time Machine two days in a row, and it just wasn't as funny the second. Why time. would you do that, two <laughs> days oh, right, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> let us know your thoughts. Um, also, I want to give a shout out to our Patreon producers: Muhammad, Muhammad, Blackjack, Al Tribesman, and Connor Nolan. Thank all of you. You can get the show ad free by going to Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny. You can also watch this on YouTube.com/slash Kind of Funny or RoosterTeeth.com. If you want to listen to it, just search for Kind of Funny Reviews on your favorite podcast service. Uh, we appreciate all of you, just like we appreciate Carter. Harrell at Carter Harrell, um, who made dope music for the intro. We also appreciate Cameron uh, Kennedy, who made the dope graphics for the intro. We also appreciate Kebabs, who in the description made an amazing trivia FAQ you can look at for all the super nerdy Easter eggs and trivia and stuff you could want for the Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Hobbit movies because he's that crazy. Um, and finally, I do want to give the shout out to the master of facts, the Lord of Corrections, the Faz. Um, over on Reddit, kind of funny is Reddit. He corrects us and lets us know what the questions that we have. Um, Nick wondered why Osgiliath is so important. Uh, Nick wonders why the city is constantly attacked. Osgiliath was the original capital of Gondor, lying on the Great Andean River, which essentially splits Middle Earth in two. It was built on the only crossing point for hundreds of miles, making it a critical strategic location uh, involving Minas Tirith and Minas Morgul. So, it's like Miami. Right. It's like Miami Beach. Well, it's a sleepy <laughs> town. And then everyone's like, here's where all the cocaine's going to come through. Them. Exactly. Oh, where we go. It's very important. I don't think it's like Miami. Yeah. <laughs> Question they on make a, a lot of veiled references to that good Shire weed. So maybe that's where they were bringing it in, if you know what I mean, Kevin. Just importing it through the through Osgiliath right, it was ports. From Hobbiton to. Yeah. All right, I got you. Was Helm's Deep Theoden's best option? Rohan is the land of great plains, and this is where Gandalf and Aragorn wanted Theoden, Theoden uh, to fight Saruman's forces. They believed the armies of Rohan, mostly cavalry, would be would best fare by using their hit and run tactics to launch devastating strikes against the enemy foot soldiers. In the movies, his apprehension to the plan seems to come from not being confident that Aomer and the other Rohirrim 
or Hiram, Riders yeah. will hastily, re hastily return after being exiled. Helm's Deep is actually closer to Isengard than Edoras was, so uh, going there to have a battle will prevent a lot of settlements from being devastated in the warpath. So, okay, there was some more reason. That makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Also, um, like, couldn't... they didn't expect the bomb to be there, you know what I mean? They were going to hold it down. That's true. You have yeah. to imagine, like, like twenty, two, like two hundred years ago, someone was like, "We got, we guys, we got to build this little gate in here." I'm telling you, irrigation is going to be a son of a bitch. And the king back then was like, "Fine, just build it." What's what's the worst that could happen? There's, yeah, you know what I mean. It what's was the on they, the king was just tired of it. He's like, he "Okay, just, fine, fine, uh, fine, off on it." Yeah, it's you fine. know, like he had just finished picking the colors for the wall, and he's like, "I just can't make any more decisions. You have to make yeah. this decision." I bet the you the like sewer system made that's like way way more comfortable though. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Kevin. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Stinky. Uh, two more here. Um, Elrond's family are half elves and get to choose whether to remain an immortal elf or take the gift of men and become mortal. Staying in Middle Earth for Aragorn while the last of the elves leave for Valinor means she's accepting no that she no longer belongs with them and her fate is with men and mortality. She will still live for a few hundred years but will never be allowed to enter Valinor as the Undying Lands is only for the Valor, Maiar, elves, and ring bearers. And uh, finally, Nick asks a crucial question. Because they get all cool when they get the ring on. Yeah, that's not okay. true. That's not true. They get the power. They get the power of Grayskull. Frodo doesn't get any power. Nick asks that's a funny, crucial Nick. question. Where was Bill the Pony when Gimli fell off his horse on the way to Helm's Deep? Mm -hmm. We don't know much about his journey back to Bree, but I believe he stayed in Rivendell for a while. Sam was distraught when he was releasing him outside of Moria, so Gandalf mm -hmm. laid his hand on the pony's head and spoke in a low voice, go with words of guard and, and guiding on you. You're a wise beast and have learned much in Rivendell. Make your ways to a place where you can find grass, and so come in time to Elrond's house. Do you think Bill okay. was like, what? <laughs> like, what heck, bro? I don't know what that stuff means. <laughs> uh, excuse me. <laughs> I, like to think, I like to imagine there's another story out there where Bill the Pony just like ran, like just went rampant and just started terrorizing towns all over the place on his way back to the Shire. He was like, I'm just gonna eat everyone's grass. I want what I would like. What I would like to see is one of the the nine, one of like the Nazgul riding him at the end, like Bill. No, like, he's, Bill, not good. Bill, he's not good. <laughs> okay, like, so guys, uh, we today are talking about Lord of the Rings: Return of the King, Part One, released on December seventeenth, two thousand three. Directed by Peter Jackson once again. Budget of ninety four million. Box office of one. Point one four two billion dollars. Yeah, the B. It's a, B. It's a lot it's of a big moolah. old B. A lot of moolah. Um, um, I'll tell you this though: this movie could have used slightly more budget. And I know we say that, and I know, and it's shout out to Peter Jackson for squeezing every single possible uh, dollar out out of this and getting as many visual effects as he could. But there is plum. There is some stuff in here that I'm like, wow, that is fire barely TV quality. What's that? Just the fire in general, anytime. The fire, the 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 army of the dead. Uh, anytime there's a Nazgul dragon, I was like, whoa, that thing doesn't look like it's moving enough. It's just like there's one part where I Nazgul, wonder... and I think this was the extended edition. Yeah, probably I was they cut it out. But yeah, there's one part where the Nazgul is sitting there on a dragon, and the dragon just kind of like has one plane of motion. It was, it's like someone had like five seconds to do the puppet tool on it, and they were like, here you go, and they like, make it smile, and it just kind of smiles, blinks yeah. a couple times. They're like, that's good enough. No one's. Yeah, they out. so grant so um, on the director's commentary, they mentioned that. Uh, they had already won all the Oscars for this, and then they went back and added scenes, obviously for the DVD for the extended, and like the scene with all the skulls falling out uh, in the in the that was cool the town the of the way. dead or whatever. Yeah, and he was like, I told the crew that this is probably the first scene to be made after an Oscar has been won already for the movie, <laughs> which is like really weird to think about that you're still That's making awesome. stuff for a movie that you already won an Oscar for. Yeah, that, that is just great. shows you how I much think... he loves that movie, you know. Nick, what, uh, to your point about the the CG, like there's, I feel like in this movie there's more points it stands out than the other ones because I do think this movie looks better than the other ones. Like it, this one feels more modern. I, it's crazy that even two years from the first one could make such a difference, especially when they're shooting back to back. But I do think this movie feels the most modern of any of them, which makes that stuff stand out a little bit more. It's um, no, it's it's true, Tim. They they mentioned that uh, even for Gollum and his CG. That in the two years that had passed, Weta had figured out more ways to use uh, uh, deformations in the face and muscle groups in the face and stuff to get act like more accurate uh, facial expressions. So mm -hmm. even in those two years, they were already advancing that tech as well. It's crazy, man. It, it blows um, yeah, my mind the that run they time don't have is 4K okay? for this stuff yet. I know it's coming, but it's like how how much longer, guys? They announced. Like, uh, I mean, uh, we, I got they tagged announced in earlier this yesterday. year. Right? No, but I got no. They announced it you in October last year, but yeah. I just got announced. I just got tagged in a tweet from yesterday 
that was saying, yeah, it's coming this year or whatever. I hope the 4K restoration looks good and doesn't expose flaws. I think it will. These movies are about to get exposed. Yeah. 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 But like, I mean, mean, unless they upgrade all the effects too, you never know. Maybe they're allowed to go back in there and do some stuff. That'd be um, so that could be cool. Because I mean, like, think about it this way: if, if you're going to sell a whole new set of DVDs, you're going to make a lot of money. It'd be dope if they gave Weta like another forty million dollars and uh, let them remake a movie that already came out. Sorry, what? George Lucas. <laughs> 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 a runtime of four hours and eleven minutes. Strap in, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, today we're just talking about the first half of Return of the King Part Two. I want to come out and say it. So far, this is by far my favorite one. I love wow. the, the pacing of it. I feel like it, it might just be the how it does feel more modern, but it might also just be that I know these characters. So it's like I am more interested and I love it's funny watching these like it feels like I'm watching them as TV episodes because mm-hmm. we're watching it so close. But when this movie starts, every character and group kind of gets their character moment with the music hitting and like it's weird because I'm like, we just saw them, but it's, that's just because of how I'm watching these movies. But I'm like, I care about all of you and I want to know where you are. And it's like, I'm not questioning your names anymore. It's like, I know who you all are and why you're there and what's up. So it's like, with all of that, obviously it's the third movie. So that's going to come. But I think they do a good job of giving them interesting things to do that I'm I'm following along with. Um, But there are two criticisms. One I stand by and one I'm kind of like, well, this kind of is actually helping me enjoy these movies more. There's so many moments that this movie feels like a stage play where I'm like, you guys are acting so weird. Oh, and the sure. way you're talking, the things that are happening, all especially the whole when they they fight Saruman, it's just like, what the fuck is going on? But the moment I'm just like, just look at this as like a super fancy play. Then I'm like, this is dope as hell. When you look at it as a movie, it's like this is weird. But it's yeah. like that's okay. It doesn't need to be Saruman you know. being added was all extended cut stuff. That's not in the, oh, yeah. in the original. I, I love it though, dude. I I love that back and forth, and I'm with Tim on this where it does kind of. There, it, it does dip a little bit into the melodramatic, but I kind of start. I'm starting to look at all of these movies as like a Shakespearean epic, totally. where it's like there are going to be moments. Like, if you, I mean, again, <laughs> I'm not a, a professional when it comes to Shakespeare, and and I, I mostly hated the, reading them. But I remember when you're reading these five act plays, there's always moments where they have these one offs with these side characters that you just don't get in modern storytelling anymore because we don't have the patience for it. Specifically, like I always remember distinctly being uh, put off by the fact that I'm like, why are we focusing on Marion? Pippin. I don't care about these side characters that much. Um, but I but the more I'm like lulled into the the world of this movie, the more I'm like, okay, I, I do want to kind of see what their their character transitions are. And but I really, really, really never want them to put Dominic Moynihan in a mask anymore. Because when he smiles, <laughs> he looks demented. He's like, it's, ah, it's weird, man. And it's creepy. But yeah, the, the literariness of it all, I think, is kind of what, what adds to it. And when you just look at it through that frame and that lens, it's like, oh shit, like this is enjoyable yeah. on a different level that I don't get from you know blockbusters which are the things that i traditionally like um but the one complaint that i do have and stand by is there's nothing cooler than the the army of the dead and all that and you know them coming to fight with aragorn and him having to go and having the sword all that's so dope but it's like would have been way cooler if we knew about these guys before they were immediately introduced yeah it's you we're now three movies in somewhere in and exactly and I, i just feel like every single part of this move these movies feel like the moment you get to a new chapter it's like well here's a new group here's the it's it's monster of the week in a, in a way and, where it's just kind of like here's the group here's who they are here's where they're important for right now move on to the next here's this new group here's where they are it's like weird that we're still doing that like it would have been so much cooler to I, I don't know. They could well, have done I this think, in, in a way that I think there are a lot of things that are supported. I think I think Aragorn's transition from being a ranger to king. I think that's where a lot of this comes in. But I will I will like say that's one of the criticisms I had last episode, and and another one that's mirrored here is that a lot of this stuff feels thrown in as filler because we need to uh, make some uh, you know challenges and a lot of things for the for the humans to overcome and the other hobbits to overcome. Because realistically, like the most important and to me the most fascinating story is Frodo's journey. But like you got to have the other characters doing something. So of course, what's cooler than oh we need more more people? Well, let's go get this army of the dead in this crazy mountain pass that's like got this cool door and then yeah, like it's a like, cool scene. But it does. You're right. I, I just feel like I feel like Tolkien could have shaved off maybe a book and this this series could have been just as impactful. But you all, I get yeah, it. you all should really listen to the commentary because when they get to uh, the mountain and uh, and the army of the dead, you Peter Jackson is like audibly like. Yeah, I just I never really liked this. It always felt like, you know, this if Aragorn, yeah. if Aragorn just has this amazing army, then there is no stakes anymore. Yeah. And you can you could hear how conflicted he is when they get to this part. He's like, I never felt good 
there was never going to be a good way to go about doing this. He was like, we just did the best we could. And I, I like the way like, the theatrical does it way more, though. Uh, the theatrical version, uh, when the army that the, there's never a part him where there where the army of the dead pops up and and the the leader like pops the mountain and he's like we are with you now that never happens it's more of a surprise uh, at the end they come out and fight essentially once, yeah. they essentially the scene cuts off where he's like what say you will you join us what say you and the the scene cuts off there and you never really know if they do join yeah but in the extended it's like he goes out he sees the ships he cries and then they pop out and it's like I didn't like the way any of that felt. I don't but I also like, but it, that's a good point, right? So to Tim's earlier point, like this, getting an army of the dead is such a major thing. It should have been the whole point of a movie. Like this feels like the climax of a movie of like, we have to like, everything should have built up to him recruiting these people. And the fact that it's just randomly introduced with one second when he looks over and then someone's like, he's like, what is that? Oh, that's the door to Dimbledalt. <laughs> and what's the door to Dimbledalt? Oh, let me tell you some cool exposition right now. So you care about this. Well, do I care about this? But then, of course, when he fucking brings out that sword and stops a dead ghost, like a ghost sword, I was like, motherfucker, I care about this. This is dope as shit. And care. their, back, their backstory is awesome. I love their backstory. He I love him, dude. He's like, ah. I, I love everything about them. I love the fact that they betrayed Gondor back in the day and now they've been cursed. Like, I think that's such cool uh, storytelling, but I just don't love the way they go about it. Yeah. Elise, what's your take on Return of the King Part 1? Um, I... You know, for me coming off of Helm's Deep, there's these big shoes to fill. And part one, we're, we're stuck in a little bit of Hobbit, some, doing some Hobbit housekeeping there. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely a Return of the King part two gal. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Tim. We're like, it is a great conclusion to the movies. And, there, and there's a lot of payoff moments in here. I don't want to get into future spoilers, but like t Nick was saying earlier about, you know, you wonder, you watch those scenes with like Mary or Pippin and you're like, uh, these scenes, but then you get payoffs with them in, yeah. in Return of the King. You get, you know, uh, Eowyn telling, you know, Mary to be brave as they're on the, the, you know, be brave, Mary, be brave as they're on their horse and they're prepared to ride out to battle. And you're like, oh my gosh, like what they're doing is monumental. Yeah. Um, the two of them in being part of this battle like there are so many great little payoffs where you're like okay well we we did all of those scenes with with the tree <laughs> and now we're getting <laughs> yeah, right. these moments that merit it I'm, I'm i'm surprised tim said this is his favorite of of them so far because this is my second least favorite to part one of two towers um and i think a lot of it has to do with not only the army of the dead um and how sort of deus ex machina that feels you know sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but also the, um, I think th this was the one that, um, suffered the most in terms of what they added, in my opinion, where I love what they added in fellowship and two towers with a lot of backstory stuff here. I didn't need Gimli blowing away a ghost coming after him. Like it was <laughs> funny for a second or two and they just kept on going with it. None of that was ever in the original um, and I feel like a lot of what they added kind of just detracted from the overall movie. With with that for me though, Andy, uh, if I were to be ranking just the parts, obviously Helm Steve's my number one. It's like for me, what I'm saying is like looking at this, I I'm projecting that Return of the King's gonna be my favorite based on the pacing so far. Where like I'm gonna be interested like looking with part two as well. Mm -hmm. It's just like this watching this one was the first time that the I wasn't like constantly looking at it and being like, oh my God, we still have an hour left or whatever it was. It, by the time I did that, I was like, oh shit, we only have 20 minutes left. Yeah, this, like, this it one kind moves. of like, it, it just, it was paced differently than the others. And yeah. I, I don't think it was more exciting. I don't think that it had better <laughs> moments. It was just kind of like, I was kept interested mm. longer. I, I always uh, thought that like the third one feels a little bit more in terms of formula, like a Hollywood blockbuster. And maybe that's because it has the, and maybe that's why it's speaking. It has a, yeah. a climax and a big, you know, conclusion, yeah. but yeah, they're I feel like, like the a, second one feels like that too, like to me, where it's like the second one has this giant battle that we like everything's building up to, and like you know, then it has its climax. Um, but I, I don't know, I really like the, the the third one, at least this first half that we've we've just seen. Uh, I did have two things that like not like not bothered me, but like one the added scenes with Saruman where they're all like talking to him and he's talking back, and then it's like. Dude, th that tower is so incredibly tall. There is no way they can hear them. 
But it's like, like that's yeah, it's just him. Yeah. No, but but see, here's the thing. I I looked at it and I thought the same thing. Where I'm like, this is stupid. But they did this thing where it, with, with, and I had it because of the surround sound. You hear his voice booming from everywhere. Like he's also it's, a wizard. And that's the thing is like no, he's yeah, using power to, like to every, do it all. Like everyone's talking to him. You know what I mean? It's not just uh, Gandalf talking back, right? It was. Uh, yeah, you feel like if you're near a yeah. wizard, they amplify you. Sure. You know, maybe sure. maybe there's a spell. They're like, hey, magic, everyone, if we're gonna have this conversation, guess, yeah. let me bring out the magic bullhorn. Yeah. And we'll talk. But um, at least I just wanted I wanted to riff off one of your points from earlier, which was that like it does feel like this movie is sort of like, hey, guys, we've put all the hard work in with the storytelling, and now let's just get all the payoff of all these crazy, cool action scenes. Because, like, take a, take each one of them for what they are. Yeah, the Army of the Dead's unsupported, but it's dope when he chokes that dude. And, I, and you know, yeah. like, when he, when he, when, when he pulls he the sword blocks, out and salutes yeah. him, it's cool. Um, and I'm okay with that. I think, I think there's two ways to look at these, right? There's ways of breaking them down like we're doing and looking at them as different films, or really looking at this as the third act of the, the movie, which is nine hours long. If you look at it like that, well, yeah, the third act of any movie is just all action. We've already set everything up. We've already had all the characters go through their conflict and grow. And now Aragorn really is like, I'm going to be king. I've decided this is I'm going to be king. There's not much more to say. We got really, we just got to fight this army over here. And the two little dudes got to jump off Mount Doom. That's it. That's what we got to do. Let's <laughs> let's have fun with this, guys. We, we put the effort in. Now we get to reap the rewards. And this um, movie does one of my favorite things in in anything, really, which is giving reverence to a weapon. There is nothing cooler than just like building something. Oh talking my about, god! Like, look at Mjolnir, right? Like that's Mjolnir. a character, and they built it up over time so that moments in Endgame, when they happen, you're just like, "Holy shit!" And I feel like with this, it does such a good job because of the characters that have to like put it back together and their connection to Aragorn. When he gets the sword, when they give him the sword, it's just like, "Let's go!" When Dude, Elrond, go. when Elrond does the slow mo, yeah. like. The oh, flame God. of Anduri, like, oh my God, dude, I'm just like, oh, let's yeah. go, baby. That the only line thing that I did he it. said was so cool when he was, like, made from the pieces. Like, he says the name of the first sword, and he, like, calls it by yeah. its, its new name, and it's just like, oh, it's so cool. Yeah. I, the only thing I didn't like about that was was Liv Tyler's, like, we got to rebuild the sword. And he's like, you're absolutely right. And it's this epic moment, and they cut to a montage, and it's just two dudes out just hammering a sword. No, and then it comes back cool and, it's super and, it was, and then it cool. cuts back to those guys and like one of them's having a coffee. And it was like, man, we're yeah. this weekend. It's oh, totally I'm going, the, I'm going dudes to the river. That, uh, that were like the Urukai in in uh, Isengard. Like, man, it's just these dudes are always. It's just two dudes. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Jackson just turns the camera as they're just... working <laughs> off the side. <laughs> I just thought it was going to be more epic when, like, I, I don't remember that part in the original one, but I thought it was going to be like when they had to make uh, Stormbreaker. And it's like, okay, we got to turn a star on, and then and then one of us might die. <laughs> no, it's, we, hey guys, we got two black. Who do we got left? Uh, we got Bob and Phil. Are they good? Oh, they're okay. Well, you let them do it. It's fine. It's gonna be okay, he has to use it once. He's got to go down and dead with it. Not a big deal. Let's get the plot. Let's do it, yes. baby. Return of the King, extra long edition, part one. From the ashes, a fire shall be woken. A light from the shadow shall spring. Renewed shall be the blade. That was broken. The crownless again shall be king. And this movie starts off with not that. This movie starts off with what we all have been wanting, ladies and gentlemen. Some Schmeagel backstory. Why not, right? Schmeagel. Let's see some Schmeagel backstory. Uh, we finally get to see Schmeagel when he was a, when he was a normal river-going little being. And Andy Circus is every bit as weird in this role. To me, honestly... This is the one of the moments where I'm like, I'm glad I make fun of Andy Serkis. Oh, Why does he man. have to do the Schmeagel voice? Why does this he have to do great. the Schmeagel that's voice? His vo this? That's it's his so voice. Weird. It's weird. Dude, this is it, a great payoff for Andy Serkis mm -hmm. that he gets to fucking play himself after six hours of movie. Yeah, I'm I wish so conflicted with this whole thing. Because I seeing him, it from it was a moment where like, oh shit, this is cool, and mm -hmm. like I'm I'm down for some backstory. Like I think that it actually is going to help this character a lot. And I think for me, it did. Um, but the moment he starts talking, I was like, oh, they were backed into a corner because he talked funny in the other. Yeah. So now he has to talk funny here, yeah. which makes it freaking weird, especially because his friend's named Deagle and Deagle gets pulled by a fish. And I'm like, what is the physics of this? Like, what is, why <laughs> well, would you even show big this? Fish, small small, right? Big it's fish, like small animal crossing physics. Tim, it's going to be even weirder when you have a kid named him Rim, Rimothy. It's going to be so I guess like, it, I, I guess I'll, I'll tell you what. I, n I never loved the way it starts off. Um, I, I'm kind of with you, Tim. Like the first moment I saw, I was like, "Oh, that's Andy. That's Smeagol. That's really, really cool." And then immediately, I'm like, oh, "I don't really like this." 
But then once it gets dark and the music cues and the struggling of the strangling and ah. the the audio ramping up and it getting more and more intense, like dude, my like I feel fucking tense every time this scene happens. I I, I my problem with this scene is the the middle or not middle towards the end where we see him go and hide the caves, his clothes starting to fall apart, and it's like okay, this kind of like this looks like a human version of of. Smeagol, Gollum. right? Gollum. Yeah, yeah. And then you see this in-between version that's like, I don't know how he got here. I don't know what, like, why would his bones have grown and then they're going to go away? It just, that that to me was where it was like, I wish they had paid a little bit more, I don't know, yeah. money to the I, FX I, people. I, I wish the middle version was just CGI as opposed to, like, prosthetics and stuff. Actual. And they, they mentioned that they... You know, they add the CGIs on top of the prosthetics, but it's still kind of funky looking. When he crawls into the cave, he's like, <laughs> like, it just always looked weird to me. So what you're I, talking about, Kevin, is like the kid that would, you 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 know, finish school for the year, go away for the summer. Some kid would come back two feet taller. Yep. And you'd be like, what happened? What, what happened? Where was that missing piece? Yeah. That's, that's that little bit sometimes, of golem. You're like, what? The best we don't see the missing piece, at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, 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 I didn't have a problem with the transition. I thought I, I thought it was necessary. And I, th I just kind of read that as like the ring. That's what happens to this particular like kind of being when he's corrupted by the power of the ring and it like mutates him into this kind of crazy uh, monster basically. And I think that was obviously like, you know, thematically that's just a visual representation of what the ring's going to do to Frodo or what's doing inside of Frodo. So I thought that was pretty cool. What I didn't think was cool was I was eating lunch when he was eating that fish and I almost oh threw up in my mouth. Holy what a terrible God. taste. <laughs> uh, have you guys seen the, um, I saw it recently, like a bunch of places were posting articles about like, Oh hey, they just released some footage that had never before seen of Frodo starting to become like a Gimli version or not Gimli, what's his face? Gollum version. Gollum, Gollum version. Oh, it's cool. And he looks cool. freaky. Very cool. Well, speaking of Frodo, we get all that backstory, uh, and of course, uh, if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, that's, this is where he originally finds the ring and then kills his friend and then becomes corrupted by it and crawls into the uh, the the shadows of uh, what is it called, Andy? What's the mountain? Where is it? Mount 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 Doom. Nope. Where did they find him originally? Doesn't matter. Uh, oh. Where Bilbo finds him. Anyway, uh, then we, oh. catch up with, we catch up with Frodo and Sam. Frodo uh, has been staying up all night looking at the ring while Sam sleeps. Gollum wakes, uh, wakes them up to take them back onto the trail. Uh, Sam gives Frodo his share of that llama's bread so he can keep his strength up. He's rationed enough. And when uh, Frodo goes, enough for what? Uh, Sam says, for the journey home. And he goes, oh. um, which is like a, a, a heartbreaking part because you're like, bro, you are not getting this, are you? Yeah, it hasn't <laughs> quite set in that this is a one way trip. Well, you uh, know, it's interesting. Later we see, uh, man, how did I forget the name already? Anyways, we see, uh, bro, man. Aragorn, no. Aragorn. Legolas, Aodin, Aomer, All right, Bill. now you guys are making it worse. Um <laughs> Smeagol go, Smeagol go and steal the the bread and throw it off. But he he throws two of them down. How many? Like, wouldn't he have a lot more for the way back? Well, they were rationing it. They're having like a bit of it. Remember, because the llama's bread fills yeah, you yeah, up yeah, more. Yeah. It's like special magical elvish bread. Um, but this scene reminds me, guys. I know it probably reminded you, of course, of that amazing scene in the abyss where Ed Harris is like sneaking. He has to go down all the way to like the lowest point on the, in the ocean, and like all of this stuff's like super pressurized. And he's got to breathe the stuff. The amniotic and, and he's, fluid. He's yeah. He's typing back and forth with Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio, and she's like she's like screaming at him to like stop and but to like come back up to save himself. And he's like, I knew this was a one way trip when I when I signed up for it. And like he tells her he loves her, and then he disarms the bomb, and he has to just sit on the ocean floor. It's like the most gut wrenching thing ever. We should watch. We should do James Cameron in review and definitely have the abyss I'm 100%. in there. But I'm not watching Titanic again. Well, you'll watch Terminator again, right? Hell yeah, I'll watch Terminator again. Yeah, that, was, that, was, that was a test. You all passed. Uh, back over at Isengard, Stony Baloney and his buddy Phil McPot uh, are smoking that good Shire weed as Gandalf rolls in. And like, could you imagine if you saw these two and you're like, <laughs> we even fought, we fought a battle at Helm's Deep. People are going to write about it and you guys are just sitting here smoking weed? No way, dude. They're like, hey, man. Good job fighting that battle. We stopped them. You know? Well, that's yeah. true. That's you know, it, like, uh, th this is the factory where they made the Urukai. But, like, I'd be like, did you guys stop them or did Treebeard and people? Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, Doesn't I'm matter. Not Treebeard, very... Treebeard wouldn't have gone there unless Perry least, Winkler told him. At least I'm not giving, I'm not giving P Mary and Pippin an inch. I'm not giving them any credit for any of this stuff. Well, actually, what? one of them did get gain an inch when they yeah. drank a lot, if you'll recall. Very mm. true. Um, yeah, mm. they got taller. 
Kuda. I mean, touche is what I meant to say. Uh, okay. <laughs> let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Treebeard tells them all about the wizard locked in his tower, and Gandalf tells them all to be careful. Even in defeat, he says, Sauron is dangerous. Gimli wants to just go up there and cut his head off, and for the first time ever, I find myself agreeing with that little hairy bastard. Uh, <laughs> but Gandalf needs him alive so they can get information out of him. Uh, Saruman, of course, wants to talk it out with Theoden, and he tries to he tries to appeal to Theoden's better nature, but not knowing the king's... He's like, I've been too... With, too much, through too much shit, bro. I am not talking this out with you. Uh, and he says, when you hang from a gibbet for the sport of your own crows, we shall have peace. And I'm like, I don't know what any of that means, but it's probably a cool thing to say so to someone cool. when they're locked up in their tower. Uh, and then he goes, goes and tries to bargain with Gandalf, uh, but Gandalf ain't having it. Saruman offers them access to his cool crystal ball, uh, which is called a palantir. Is that how you said that mm -hmm. word, Andy? Mm -hmm. uh, he has info on some something festering in Middle Earth, uh, but Sa and Sauron's attack will come. You're all going to die. Uh, and then, of course, uh, before he gets Ar Aragorn, he says also Aragorn will never be king. He should go back to the forest and just whittle some wood. And then Gandalf tells him, he, he's like, come down. Your life will be spared. And everyone's like, are you, are you serious about this, Gandalf? Okay, cool. We'll go with this lie. How about yeah. that, guys? Uh, if I were Gimli, I'd be like, sure, sure. And second, you have to axe to the back. Axe in the skull. Yeah. You know what I mean, Elise? Just right to the back. The classic <laughs> axe to the skull. You know it, Elise. You've seen it's it. embedded in his nervous system. It's <laughs> <laughs> a spoiler, but it's, it's very relevant, right? That's a really good Perfect, line. perfect. Really good. Uh, Wait, let's real see. Quick. Um, he just but, exploded his wand. Like, yeah. It didn't, or staff. Baller. Like, it didn't seem difficult well, at all. He was like, no. fucking fireball. Yeah. Go to hell. Before, <laughs> kind he, of so, so he gets pissed off and he shoots. He says, save your, he's like, Gandalf tells him, if he comes down, we'll spare your life. And then, and then, uh, Saruman says, save your pity and your mercy. I have no use for it. And then he straight up shoots a fireball at them. And yeah. I'm like, at this point, if I were Gimli, I'd be like, what'd I say? What'd I say? <laughs> We're wasting time. Let me go up there and cut this dude's head off. Uh, and then, of course, Gandalf just randomly, magically explodes, like Kevin said, explodes Saruman's staff. And well, he then... said it was broken. Dude, oh, your wand is broken. <laughs> I don't but know what happened. Like, there, I, cool. I think he was like, it was one of those things where he was like, bro, you don't know this, but your wand's destroyed. Yeah, you know what I mean. It was a mic drop, well, I, Kevin. I think uh -huh. it was kind of. I think it was kind of like a. Uh, hey, you know what my favorite like city is? Bangkok. You know, Bam, <laughs> it was like yeah, those, I, yeah, exactly. It was one of those moments. Mm, yeah. mm. Uh, of course, then Wormtongue's like, I'm, I'm tired of all this. He starts shooting his mouth off at Wormtongue, where he's like, You just stay in your place. Wormtongue's like, You know what I'm not gonna do? I'm not gonna stay in my place. I'm gonna move forward and stab you right in the back, you old wizard. Uh, and as it, I get, it's at one point he pimp slaps Grimma, and then he's like, I'm done. I gotta stab you. Yeah. So he stabs him, um, and then Legolas for no reason shoots. Warm tongue, and I'm like, well, that was inappropriate. That guy just kind of <laughs> saved. He just did what you guys wanted to do anyway, and you guys probably could have gotten some information out of him because he well, was in the crystal like ball thingy too. Wasn't the king trying to be like win him back too, where he was like, hey, warm, whatever your name is, like you're not that bad. He's in your ear. And he's like, I know. Uh, but uh, so anyway, he's dead, and then uh, Saruman falls like 90 stories to a death and impales himself on one of those like crazy windmill things. Um, and everyone's like, well, that's problem solved. And then as he's going over, of course, <laughs> his crystal ball falls out into the water. Uh, who uh, should pick it up is Pippin, I believe, picks it up, picks it up mm -hmm. uh, and walks over and looks at it. And then Gandalf quickly snatches it from him and, and, and wraps it up in a towel. And then he shoots him a look like you dumb fuck. Every and time I don't, Pippin needs I'm like, to stop why? doing things. And it I reminds me. Yeah, go ahead, Lace. Sorry, I just want to say, like, I think Gandalf's greatest adversaries in this these films are not like Saruman or or Sauron or it's it's Merry and Pippin. It's, it's a fool, it's a fool I, of a took, man. Can, oh, I, can I propose LVP? You know what I mean? Least valuable oh. player. Yeah, that's right, Pippin, for all the movies. <laughs> I mean, he's gotta wow. stop, right? He, I'll say he's an idiot, but he stumbles into very important things in the next scene where he he hit because of his inability to not touch shit. He accidentally sure like also gets him in contact movie. with Saruman and tells him what's going on. Yeah. I mean, he, he kind Come of he brought the tree bears in. Guys, I, I don't know how we're just brushing so quickly past the fact that Saruman fell off of this thing and spun yeah. a bazillion times. <laughs> yeah. Goes into it with the most horrifying sound I've ever heard is impaled. And it's just like, damn, he is dead. And then they're like, you know what? He ain't dead enough. This thing's going to go <laughs> and slowly drown him. Yeah, it's got to drown him. <laughs> in case he wasn't dead. And the, the way that they shot it, you just see his stupid little feet <laughs> like going into the water. I was like... Oh my god! It, it is I'm interesting that no one was like, maybe we should pull his body off. I mean, I, I know I, he was terrible this year, but for the last three millennium, he's been really cool. 
I kind you of know? expected the tower to like fall on where he had <laughs> fallen. <laughs> like just all this awful shit. It was shit just so happened. Looney Tunes. Yeah, it was. I also love the fact that they're this is like one of their greatest adversaries and an old friend of Gandalf. And instead of going in and getting his body and like burying it, they were like, Well, we're good. Let's like let's we got other shit to do. Let's just go. You guys want to go? Yeah, it's fine. We'll just leave them there to rot. Um, That's what I just said. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. <laughs> no, I apologize. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. I was I was reading my notes ahead. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, no, good, it's good cool. Point, it's cool. Though. Good point. Uh, let's see where are we at. Uh, oh, as of course, Chris. While back at Rohan, Theoden drinks to the memory of his fallen men. Hail to the hail the victorious dead. Uh, Gimli and Legolas play a drinking game. What last one standing? I love this. I don't know if this was in the original or not, but no. they should have left this in. No. It's hilarious. Uh, Theoden tells his daughter he's happy for her. Uh, oh, sorry, excuse me. Eowyn, Eowyn and Aragorn take a moment to, uh, to drink from the same cup. Uh, it's a touching moment. And then Theoden actually walks away. Theoden tells his daughter that he's happy for her. Aragorn is an honorable man. Uh, but we can't. What's that? Sorry. She's knees, I'm sorry. Right. Sorry about that. Um, he's an honorable I man. Want them, I, I just don't want them coming for you after. Oh, you man. Know, I know. Yeah. But what is it? The Lord of the Facts? Down. Lord yeah. of the Facts put on his clogs and he's like, I'm about to do some river dancing on Nick right now. <laughs> Uh, so elves let's... can't get drunk. They get a little drunk. What's the he had a little that? tingle in his finger. He's, yeah, yeah. but like also they can drink a, just an obscene amount of liquid without feeling full because he did not like feel Superman. he did not look uncomfortable. You know what I mean? They don't have like they don't have nano machines inside of themselves. Like they can get a little bit drunk. You know? Yeah. Um, back at the drinking game, of course, that's exactly what we're talking about here. Gimli is uh, is Wasted. blackout, passed out, drunk, and uh, Legolas barely is affected by it. And I love it. he's like, I think I'm starting to feel a little tingle on my finger. And then. The dwarf's like, cool, bank. Does that mean uh, that the elves don't have any, like, liquor? Like, is there elvish liquor that's, like, super strong? Just, like, ether? I like to believe it's, like, Romulan ale, where it's, like, really, really hardcore because their their, their nervous systems are just that much better at yeah. taking it because they're that yeah. much stronger. Yeah. Um, that's how I read this. Uh, but also, remember, last time we saw elves in the woods, they were indulging in way worse yeah. mind-altering substances. I'm pretty sure True. they're just all about that LSD. You don't want to get crossfaded. That's too much. That's very true. Uh, Mary and Pippin dance and sing until Gandalf shoots Pippin to look like Dumbledore shot Harry in Order of Phoenix. And you're like, whoa, bro. Like, what is going on here? Can you just talk to me? Uh, and then Aragorn and Gandalf commiserate. No news. Uh, they talk about Frodo. And they're like, well, there's no news. And he's like, what does your heart tell you? And he goes, my heart tells me that Frodo is alive, which is very, very touching. Uh, Gollum has a nightmare about killing both the hobbits. Uh, no surprise there. He checks in with himself at the pond. Uh, still having those split, split personalities? Yep. Still going to lead the hobbits to the big spider lady? Yep. Cool. Okay. Well, we're on track. Everything's great. Uh, this Sam, seems course, way better than the, the first time we saw this. I think they fixed the, yeah. the split conversation stuff. It's like at least this was very well shown between him, like Smeagol being real, and then uh, Gollum being in the, the reflection. And then like when that flips, it's powerful it makes it's sense it doesn't take you out of it because it's weird like cuts i love Gollum calling him my love it's my it's the yeah. funniest thing ever just, just like yeah. him being like what about this pressure's like no my love <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so weird i love it uh and then of course sam overhears Gollum's plan and he punches his ass and then Gollum calls sam fat and we are way out of line here just across the board everyone uh, there's no reason to comment on Sean Astin's weight. Uh, Frodo still won't send him away though. They need a guide and Sam on, uh, and Sam on their side, uh, back. I don't know why, why I wrote that that way. I have no idea what I was talking about, but he's still like, I'm not going to get rid of Gollum. We need a guide. We need a guide, uh, back at Rohan, Aragorn and Eowyn have a tender moment by the fireplace. Um, by the way, if you have a place in, if you have a big ass, like a Citadel or chamber room and the fireplace is in the middle of the room, you're balling out. That is some yeah. baller shit right there. Uh, they have a tender moment, uh, but Eowyn had a bad dream of a, foreboding, of a foreboding future, and Aragorn tells her that the night can change things. Uh, things will be fine tomorrow or something like that. I don't know. I kind of I kind of lost track of what, what, what I was supposed to feel in this one. Anyway, Legolas looks out <laughs> over the horizon and says more ominous shit, and everyone's like, dude, can we just stop talking in platitudes? What is happening? What's yeah. coming for us? Uh, Pippin wakes up in the world's biggest slumber party and is spotted by Gandalf, who sleeps with his eyes open. Another creepy moment. Um, yeah. Why would he do that? It's so. It's he's... just way better to sleep with your eyes closed. Yeah, yeah. Co co Bob's points out more. that the the dream that Eowyn was having um, is a dream that Tolkien often had, where men were being like sort of flooded, and that was sort of the inspiration for creating the Numenor and and essentially the dream is Faramir's dream. Um, and Tolkien always felt like he was Faramir in this story. Um, wow. Which is like really haunting. And <laughs> yeah, that's freaky. I mean, can you fall Faramir. asleep with your eyes open? Some people can. 
I know uh, people so in their sleep. Shouldn't, Tim, he your eyes, eyes will dry oh. out. They so will the dry out. Eyes yeah, are wizards so self lubricate. That when he sleeps, you can sometimes see the whites of his eyes. Yeah, it's actually a weird. It's a weird uh, little known fact about Tolkien. But every ounce of liquid that That's Legolas so drinks lie. goes into Gandalf's eyes. That's how it goes. <laughs> weird lie. lore stuff. Yeah. So uh, Tolkien weird. wrote that in the book, and. Peter Jackson I, was like, I just really wanted Gandalf to have his eyes open like he did in the book when he was. Oh, uh, really? Because I yeah. always. Oh, sorry, Andy. I I always interpreted it as like Gandalf isn't sleeping in the conventional sense of what we consider sleep. Mm. Like, yeah, but he's, it's, doing, it's, he's doing something else. You know, mm, mm. He's, he's elsewhere. elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. Like he's on space. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. He's on a different plane. Like uh, mm. Pippin, of course, uses this opportunity to steal uh, Saruman's Palantar away from uh, Gandalf so he can look at it one more time. And when he touches it, the eye of Sauron pops up and it's super scary. And then uh, and then Pippin starts convulsing and it just starts taking him over, uh, which, of course, fire basically in his hands. It's crazy. One uh, detail then, I love is that it take it, he's freaking out for a while. Right. Pippin is like freaking out on this thing and he's slowly, slowly uh, getting weaker and weaker. And Aragorn touches it for like a second and immediately gets to the same state that Pippin had just been getting to. So you can see how much weaker men are. I think that's such a cool little comparison yeah, between the two. Oh, pure. And I love, yeah. like, I always love when you think of actors when they have to act and do something that's like they're, they're shooting, you know, fireballs with their hands. And like, he, he's got to wrestle, yeah. wrestle this talent here. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. I, I love stuff like that. Well, I, I kind of wish that. Pippin died here. I feel you like we're, we're not getting enough death of our of, of the fellowship. And no. it's just like, not that everyone needs to die, but it's like, I feel like that would have been a powerful moment. And it's just like, damn. Bro, this all. ain't a George R.R.R.R. Martin story. This is a J.R.R.R. Trokin story, okay? Mm -hmm. Damn. Very Ew. fair. Very Let's fair. Look point. in the Palantar and see what's happening. Palantir. Anyway, it's the Palantir. Whatever, whatever yeah. bro. Whatever. And, uh, bro. There's also the cool scene where Pippin's on the ground and Gandalf goes, like, this is coming up right here. And Gandalf is touching his hand and just kind of like, you know, yeah, obviously Gandalf gets pissed and goes, fool of a toque or whatever. Yeah. And then he goes down and notices how fucked up Pippin is. But the hand touching him uh, is a guy who was on set who was seven foot three. So they just had a guy with giant hands <laughs> touching Pippin's head to make it look like a giant comparison, you know? It's like when Jack uh, touched your, your head? Pretty Dude, much, yeah. That's God, exactly it what Andy, it was like. I was yeah. so scared. I was Me so too. scared. Me too. He could, he could have crushed you like a, like a, a great <laughs> Like a bro. pimple, dude. Like a just pimple. Like a pimple. Uh, -huh. uh when, of course uh, Gandalf asks him what he saw and he says I saw a white tree in a courtyard of stone it was dead the city was burning and he goes Minas Tirith Did I say it right Andy? Minas Tirith Minas Tirith Yeah Ath Okay. Uh, Sauron, <laughs> of course, got his ass kicked at Rohan and knows about Aragorn and now, and he's going to destroy Minas Tirith. Uh, Theoden wants to know why. And he's like, we got to come to their aid. And Theoden goes, why would I come to their aid? There's some, someone's aid who didn't come to ours. So and petty. at which point I would have been like, have you learned nothing from what's going on right now? Like, what do you think is going to happen if Gondor falls? Do you think they're going to just give Rohan a pass? Or do you think they're going to come back this way and just destroy everything? Also, bro, you didn't ask for help. You were like, yeah. remember? Yeah, remember? Gandalf was like, hey, man, let's ask for help. And he was like, oh, no, we, like, they won't come. I mean, it's just it's throw ego. throw that out afterwards? It's totally ego. It's pathetic. pure ego. Yeah. Pathetic. It's, it's pathetic. Gandalf tells Aragorn to come to Minas Tirith. Is it Minas I want to say this right. Minas Tirith? I mean, I, I, that, that time you said it, it right. Tirith. Minas Tirith. Okay, bye. He says, I'm going to go, but you have to go by another road. Follow the river. Look to the black ships. Right uh, Gandalf himself uh, will ride straight to Minas Tirith, but he won't be alone. He's like, hey, dumbass, you got to come with me because I don't trust you by yourself. You're going to set this whole place on fire, uh, and you're not allowed to plug things into uh, AC Volt ports anymore. Uh, so he rides out with Pippin. Uh, Pippin and Mary have a good moment before they go. Pippin doesn't understand why Mary is so pissed, so Mary lays it all out for him. He goes, Sauron thinks you have the ring. He's going to be coming to hunt you down. He's actually very worried for his friend. And then as they ride off, uh, he has a really good moment with, with uh, I think it's Legolas, where he says, "I've never, we've never really been apart before. I've always gotten him in so much trouble, but then I've gotten him out. So I don't know. Who's it was Aragorn. It was Aragorn. It was. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, the same guy who was touching his face to show the giant dude or whatever. He they, they show Mary or they show Mary walking, but running by him up the stairs to eventually look at Pippin riding off with uh, with uh, Gandalf. And they just did that because this guy's seven foot three, so he looks so <laughs> tiny running up. Next hey, man, to him. we need your hand. That's awesome. Yeah. But I love I love I get so stoked every time of. Uh, 
come on, Shadowfax, show us the meaning of haste. haste. It's like ah, that's a cool oh, fucking oh, line. Oh, dude. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, we split back over to out in the woods, uh, where the elves just leisurely stroll to the ships anchored at Grey Haven, which will take them to a place where elves go. Uh, our, as Arwen rides, though, she looks over and she gets a vision of Aragorn and a young boy who we assume would be her son. Uh, they look happy, and she realizes that leaving means that she'll never get a chance to make Armageddon and therefore deprive the world of the greatest movie ever made. This won't stand. She, of course, heads back to her father for the truth. What did you really see? And he says, I looked into your future and I saw death. And she was like, did you? And he's like, I saw something else. But there was also life. I have. And she's and he's like, damn it. I didn't think you were going to yeah. see that, of course. <laughs> uh, his life, uh, she, of course, would have a son with him. Nothing is certain, he says. This uh, something, And she says, some things are certain. If I leave now, I will regret this forever. It is time. So she's come to the conclusion and finally made a decision that she's going to stay. Um, and, and she's going to hope for the future, even though it might not happen, uh, from the, and then she goes, it's time. And he's like, what do you mean it's time? Like, it's only eight o'clock. She goes, no, 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 You know what I'm talking about, bro. We got to remake it. And that's where we get, I'll say this top, top five lines of all time in Lord of the Rings. He says, from the ashes of fire shall be woken. A light from the shadow shall spring. Renewed shall be the blade that was broken. The crownless again shall be king. Translation, what? let's. Jordy la reforge the sword of en Elendil so Aragorn can be king and wreck shit up. Um, at that, oh. fuck yeah, goosebumps, dude. Let's uh, go, baby. Uh, and then, of course, there's a great moment here where she drops her book, and as Elrond picks it up, he puts it back in her hand and he realizes that her hand is cold. He says, Her hand is cold mm -hmm. to the touch. And we realize uh, that all he says, The life of the El Eldar is leaving you. Uh, now you're human, and or excuse me, like now, the gods, now you're living the human yeah. life, basically. Yeah. So she's become she's becoming human. She says, "This was my choice. There's no ship now that can bear me hence. Uh, but in like two thousand years, someone told me about this cool ship called the Titanic, and that sounds super promising. So I'll probably just hop on that if I can move mm, to it. Mm, that's, uh, that's what we call a bad joke. It, is this is this it the? It sure is, Nick. It sure is. Is this the vision where she sees the kid? That, 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 that was right before that. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that the kid thing, and again. I'm not even going to look at you guys for your facial reactions or anything because I don't know what happens in these movies. But I was just like, how they have said enough, I was like, is that not her kid? Is this Eowyn's kid? Are y'all about to be oh. twisting me on some twisty no, shit? No, like, no, I think, no. weren't they implying that she was like going to have a kid and he's, yeah. he's making so what, implications someone's going to die, it's going to be her, right? Well, that's going to be both of them. It's just like, yeah. like uh, the No, no, I mean at childbirth. Forever. Right? Well, I mean, originally, oh, no, no, oh. no, no. Originally, oh. what he had said is that you were going to. The vision I had was that you were going to stop. You're going to become human. You're going to live with him, but you'll outlive him, and then you'll watch him mm -hmm. die, and then you'll be alone. And you'll be alone. What, what he awesome. didn't show her was the fact that she wouldn't be alone because they'll have a kid together, and that kid will go on and live, and she'll be able to watch him grow up, and then see what was going to happen there. Well, the so kid, he left out. He omitted some of the stuff mm, that he potentially could have seen, which the, was she could have been happy forever. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, will the that kid makes sense. have like elongated life? Probably, I mean, he's right? He's Numenor, a Numenor. Right? Yeah. Aragorn. And an elf. And an elf. Yeah. Or an elf he's also probably going to have either a longer... Kevin, what would you pick? Don't. Longer life or just unbelievable ability to drink whatever the hell you wanted all the time? I mean, definitely. Yep, on, uh, no, because like I feel like getting drunk Kevin, is, is something that's totally fun. You know what I mean? Kevin, you could drink sodas and not get not gain weight. I don't think that's how that works. That's not how it <laughs> works. Not that not part of the plan. Not get the farts, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. You get soda farts? The soda farts? I, I can't. I can't burp. Um, I, I like, can't listen I, to people burp. It's a good combo. No, 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 Kevin. Kevin let Elise go. Yeah, we gotta, <laughs> I, I, I want to hear about. Wait, why can't you listen to people burp? It really grosses me out. It's, Does it make you like have a gag reflex or something? No, no, it just grosses me out. It's like one of those things where it's like I feel like it's one of the most impolite things you can do. I it, yeah, I, I mean I don't love weird. it. Maybe because I'm jealous. I mean Kevin and I should be like like they should have started a podcast. I'm partners. <laughs> Wait, so I'm sorry. What happens bodily, when you burp? What's up, everybody? Welcome I, to Bodily Function Podcast. Elise <laughs> Willems and Kevin Coelho. I, you know I like involuntarily maybe like twice a year my body like out of nowhere I'll like burp, but then most of the time I just. My body, I just can't burp. So, I, oh, you know, yeah. it's got to come out somehow. Nah. <laughs> Is that why you keep a dog um, around? You like it with that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh man. man. Anyway, yeah. uh, so of course, Elrond puts his top two men on it uh, on the project and they start to reforge the sword <laughs> that Sauron like, cut Sauron's finger off. Uh, the one sword to rule them all. That's what they say, Andy, right? That's the saying. The uh -huh. one sword to rule them all. And they rebuild the sword with relative ease. And I'd be like, hey, we probably should have done this a while back because this is the kind of thing that would go for at least a thousand dollars on eBay. 
Uh, <laughs> Gandalf and Pippin hit Minas Tirith, uh, City of Kings, and it is dope. But I do wonder, uh, Andy, this question's for you. Do you, would you live in this city? Because there's so many stairs. There's Ooh, so many, there's so many stairs. 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 It's cool, dude. I think this is the coolest city ever. I love that this city is so self-contained. This is the capital city of Gondor, and it's just. It's such a cool vibe. The fact that it's just that everything is stacked on top of each other. I yeah. think it's like I think it's so brilliantly laid out and visualized for this movie. It's, so it's cool. a shame though that they stole it from the end of Kingdom Hearts three. Wow, the that in, that's you know, true. That's, like, that's the biggest I, controversy of them all. I wonder if there are people that live on their level and never leave it their entire lives. I'm sure that's how it goes down. Mm -hmm. Like they probably that are like, oh, we live on the fourth ring and it's pretty all cool right. up here. It's yeah. kind of. I, I bet you what sucks is I bet you Time Warner or Comcast has like a pretty big monopoly and where you can get internet and like it's like <laughs> oh, I want to move up to get better internet. They're like, nah, it's all Time Warner, dude. Like either way, you're fucked. <laughs> dude, we can't get Sonic. Bubble. We can't get Sonic up here. So, well, the fifth floor has Sonic, but there's just a trial run, and yeah. the, the penthouse has Google Fiber. But that's because they, also have, they have a putting green up there, too, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, where was I, guys? Okay, Gandalf rides his horse literally all the way up uh, to the putting green up uh, by the Citadel. <laughs> and Pippin spots the white tree of Gondor from his vision. Uh, they head into the throne room to speak with Lord Denner, Denner, Denethor, 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 Denethor. Uh, who is Boromir's father. Uh, he is not king, importantly. He is the steward, steward of Gondor. Uh, which is which actually is really cool visually because he can't he doesn't sit on the throne he yep. sits on that tiny little chair right below the throne and I'm like what is that old man this guy steward is. yeah the uh, uh, Peter Jackson mentions how um, <laughs> the <laughs> steward yeah <laughs> Peter Jackson mentions that the guy who plays Denethor uh, is known for doing a lot of stage plays and he loved how he brought a very Shakespearean sort of vibe to this character oh, yeah. and also this character in the book uh, apparently has a crazy long beard. But Peter Jackson's like too many people have beards in this movie. Too many guys with beards. It's like kind of funny. Beards. Yeah. It's like it's yeah, yeah exactly like, kind of funny. Uh, he is named John Noble, and he <laughs> played Walter Bishop in uh, Fringe, and I loved him in that. His character and that was super cool. He played a genius. I love this time. character. It's it's a, he's awesome. Like, he I, sucks, but this he's guy awesome. pisses me off <laughs> yeah. so much. It's like, exactly, be Kevin. Be fucking nice to your fuck. What Fenner? 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 Fenner. There it's Fenner. it. Like, what nice his backstory him. is like he lost his wife and that plunged him into sadness, right, Andy? Is that uh, it? But, like, I don't know. I think, I think it's something to do is with that. Is it when, when Fenomir was born? Because that would make a little more sense. <laughs> it, it may actually... That would make a little more So that's why maybe he hates Fenor. We'll, we'll wait to see what Kebab says in chat. <laughs> he reminds me a lot of uh, Walter Frey Fenomir. from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah, I can see bit. that. Yeah, a little bit. Except that guy was... Uh, wasn't that Filch from... Uh... It was. Mm-hmm. From Harry Potter, Harry man, Potter. There's, there's only like five British dudes you can pick that are old that can be in these things, and I'm happy I'm not one of them because God, I don't want to be in one of these movies, right? It just seems too cool. But anyway, I, I, I do love I do love Faramir seeing, um, seeing Pippin and being like a Hobbit, and then uh, Gandalf being like, "This is not the first Hobbit you've seen, you've crossed paths with." That's so cool. Mm. So you well, see Sam. Uh, but before we get to that, of course, uh, we have this great scene between uh, Denethor and the old steward. He's not having any of this shit. They walk in with with respect, and he's like, oh, maybe you guys have come to tell me why my son is dead. Uh, beforehand, of course, Gandalf's like, don't mention Boromir. Don't mention that. You know what? Don't even talk. I love this. I'll do I, love all the talking. I love it so much. Like, don't worry about mm -hmm. talking. Like, you're going to yeah. screw it yeah. up. Just don't. Don't. It's, such, course, a, it's right such a comedically timed, like, yeah. you know, uh, re reading of those lines. And also, don't mention this. And also, actually, don't fucking yeah. talk at all. <laughs> like, right. so, good. so good. Um, and then, of course, uh, the best laid plans right when they walk in, he's got he's holding Boromir's broken uh, horn because Faramir has already reported back that his brother is dead or his son is dead. And uh, in order to make up for it, Pippin in his grand uh, in, in his in all of his glory says, well, I know what will help. Uh, Boromir died saving me. And uh, to repay his debt, I will be I will I, I will be your servant forever. And Gandalf's like, why? Why would you do this? This is un he doesn't want this is unnecessary. Yeah, uh, uh, but he's already you, done you, it. It's the kind of thing you say to uh, a king or a steward, and you can't take back. You know, exactly. but you also hope that they like deny you, and they're like, Nah, you don't got to do that. <laughs> he accepts. He's like, I accept, and I'm going to put you through the ringer. Uh, Dude, again, I, I love him. when he, I, love, I love when he's like, one arrow can take down a man. He got taken down by many arrows. Yeah, just yeah. Like, that's so one arrow can take cool. down even the greatest man, and it took many arrows to take yes. Boromir down. Oh. Uh, which which is very cool. Uh, Gandalf tells Denethor that the war is coming, and he says, "Where are Gandalf's? Uh, where are Gondor's armies? Send word 
to Theoden of Rohan, light the beacons, and then uh, uh, John Noble has a great line here where he says, with your left hand, you would use me as a shield against Mordor, and with your right, you'd seek to supplant me. God, Meaning, man. this is a lose-lose situation for him, because he's like, if we win, he's like, I know about Aragorn, you're going to just put him on my throne, and then I'm out. So, no, I'm just going to go at this with the army that we have right now, and hope to God we figure out a way to pull this bad boy out. Uh, this, let's this is a leader that has no regard for his people at this yeah. point. It's completely but wants to keep his, uh, you know, throne. Because it's just power yeah. impressive. But he, he'll be the king of ashes. That's why Still a king. Be. You know I what I mean? So. Yeah. That's, that's Kevin's, uh, <laughs> Kevin <laughs> likes that. I'm just saying, you hold on to it as hard as you can. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Gandalf <laughs> gives Pippin a history lesson, but basically kings are complacent. But what's happened is here, kings have gotten complacent over the years. Uh, and and then the rule of lesser men has taken over. And one of those lesser men has to be, is Denethor. Uh, they walk to the edge of Minas Tirith, which looks out over the shadow of Mordor, a giant cloud put into the sky to give shade to the impending orc army by Sauron. Uh, and by the way, when they made the game Shadow of Mordor, I was like, that's just a really cool name. I had no idea it was actually a reference to something in Lord of the Rings. That makes it way cooler. I'll never play it. Out in Mordor. Dude, Shadow uh, of Mordor is awesome, Nick. Pretty know, good heard, game. It's, it it's, cool. it's amazing. Nick, I've only ever played, like, I stopped playing the story. I didn't realize there was a second map. Because it's so much fun to play the, the like just run roam around recruiting uh, orcs or yeah. captains and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. just going really and cool. killing them. Yeah, uh, sounds cool, but it doesn't sound as cool as me undies, ladies and gentlemen. This episode is brought to you by That's me good. undies. I love me undies. I'm wearing some just just some gray ones right now. Andy, what are you wearing? You got a face. Um, you had a fun little face going on. I don't like. The way I, I have a snowman. Got that snowman. What? Yeah, yeah. That micro. Wait, Andy, did you fabric. get your pack? No, I haven't gotten the random pack. But these <gasps> these snowmen are from ones that I bought prior. Yeah, really, really good stuff. Joey, Joey got some recently. She's loving hers. Everyone loves them. Me They've got man. Baby Yoda. They do. They do. They do. What? So. Yep. I saw it in an Instagram ad. Yep. I want that so bad. <laughs> um, MeUndies are made from micromodal, an irresistibly soft, sustainable fabric that encases your nether regions in cloud-like comfort. It's magically made from trees. Another reason to give them a hug. All of this is true. I can stand by this. I'm a, a me undies guy through and through. Uh, to get 15% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash morning. That's MeUndies.com slash morning for 15% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Um, a really cool thing, too, is MeUndies continues to take action to achieve their mission of creating a more thoughtful and accepting world by making $50,000 donations to both the It Gets Better Project and Black Lives Matter. Um, they, like MeUndies, are committed to standing up against hate and intolerance and creating a world where hope outshines fear for all people. Uh, with MeUndies Gives, simply by shopping MeUndies, you'll help support this cause. Super awesome stuff. Obviously, we stand by all of this. So again, MeUndies.com slash morning for 15% off your first order. Free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Now it's back to Lord of the Rings. Cool. Nick, oh, Nick's still gone. continue the plot. <laughs> Nick, go ahead. Nick. <laughs> Nick, go ahead. Is he wearing the ring? Uh, how cool would that be if he just goes, ah, and just oh, we, back have, in? we have Seriously? the ability, Kevin. Yeah, yeah I know. That's the, the thing. We have effects like that we can do. It's yeah, just, it's just it's a, a that's just a stream deck thing, Kevin. Yeah. That's a stream deck thing. You know, Not even. You, yeah. It could be an OBS thing where you just have okay, a static. I'm also going to pee. Can you, can you host the show for now? Yeah, sure. Make the, do a podcast from the podcast. Go for it. Oh, uh, no. Nick's back. So we can just Nick's carry. Nick's back. Yeah. Carry, I just, I feel Why like. Why are you wearing shorts? Why because the jacket yeah, style, it's, it's so style. hot down there, though, you know? Sorry, Nick. Uh, ben, uh, Kevin and I had our burp podcast going. Oh, that's uh, great. I'm sorry about that. I just had to, uh, I had a lot of soda this morning. Are we ready to pick back up the plot? No, we're go ready ahead. for Tim. Well, I'm just going to go anyway. Okay. Uh, out in Mordor, <laughs> Frodo has a feeling he won't be coming back, but Sam won't hear of it. We're going there and back again, just like Mr. Bilbo. And Frodo's like, again. Look around you. <laughs> this is not going to end well for us. Uh, they walk by the fallen head of an old statue of the King of Gondor. Uh, and for a brief fleeting moment, the sun shines on a crown of flowers around his head. Uh, out on a balcony, Pippin and Gandalf look out into the night sky. Pippin makes the observation that there's no stars. And then uh, Gandalf's like, well, it's almost time. That's why. Uh, Gandalf tells him there's still hope, though. A fool's hope though it may be, then goes on to tell him uh, all the super scary stuff that Sauron has recruited for the war. He's like, there's tons of hope, guys, but also, just FYI, he's got a lot of scary people on his side, and they're all coming to kill us. <laughs> what, happen well. what happens to the Urukai when the sun hits them? Uh, he said they just don't like it. Oh. So I guess it like it like it it, so, it weakens them a little bit. They like darkness. They they, they thrive in darkness. Animal? So Sauron has sort of blacked out the sky so that they can come fully to the battle. Like 
Like that's retard. pretty cool if you can just make a. Sorry, Tim, in his shorts, fixing that one it just distracted me. Um, that's pretty cool that he makes the volcano like go crazy so that it can make the clouds. You know? Yeah, I thought that was cool. I thought that's a yeah, really that's, cool. Point. That's a really cool detail. I do love a lot of ash, though. I do love Pippin just looking for hope and be like, "But we've got the White Wizard. That's got to count for something." And Gandalf being like, "Bro, you don't really know, man. You don't yeah. understand like how fucked we really are." Uh, it's so cool. I love the conversation here. Like, well, all of this, I think it's so perfectly written and acted. And he says uh, to counteract, he says, we have the White Wizard that's got to count for something. And, Sauron, and, and Gandalf's like, well, Sauron has someone called the Witch King of Agmar. Uh, and that's the same Witch King of Agmar who stabbed Frodo with a sword and almost killed him just by stabbing him. The Lord, he's the Lord of the Nazgul, the greatest of the nine, and he plays a nasty game of backgammon. Uh, Frodo and friends get to Minas Morgul, the city of the dead, and Gollum leads them to the secret stairs, which looks very, very, very difficult to climb. And this is the point I'd quit. Those I'd aren't, like, I, I, those aren't they... stairs, right? Yeah. Like those, What's those up, are... Oh, sorry. Oh, were you... oh Kevin. Were sorry, you... I'm sorry. Kevin, go sorry, ahead. Kevin, no, I, was don't like stairs. Stairs. I was saying, like, those aren't stairs. Like, that I agree is a, with you, like, that, That's a level, like, one climbing gym. Those weren't meant <laughs> to be <laughs> scaled. Yeah. Those weren't meant to be scaled by anybody. Yeah, no one's <laughs> stepping like, up those things. It's just architecture. Yeah, barely a layer of Minas Tirith. Tirith. Um, of course, uh, Frodo. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, sorry, Nick. Sorry, sorry. No, it's so hard on Zoom not to, like, or not Zoom, but on, uh, on Discord. Discord not to talk over people. Um. Uh, I was just going to say, like, uh, God, what was I going to say? Something about the stairs. We talk over each other all the time. The, what happened before the stairs? Uh, well, they get there and they, <laughs> see, they see the giant emerald palace that is, I guess, Minas Morgul. Minas Morgul. Uh, and then Fro Frodo starts walking toward it because he gets entranced once again. He's, like, Shit. pulled toward the door by the ring. Um, but that oh, that whole thing is broken up by the scream of the Nazgul. Oh, oh, oh. So, like, you were you were saying earlier about how you, you feel like there's the... There should have, they should have seated the army of the dead somewhere earlier. Mm -hmm. I I love the Witch King, but I've always had a little bit of a hang up where it's like, you know, we've been together for this long and you haven't mentioned this Witch King. <laughs> like now you're <laughs> yeah. just like, oh yeah, and by the way, one of them is OP and yeah. like the leader of them. And he's, I've always felt like that could have been a, a one, even a throwaway line in an earlier movie, like, Yes, well, you if you if you fear the nine riders, you do not want to see their leader or something like that. Yeah, totally, right. you know, totally. Just, yeah. just give it some some grounding and some texture. Right? Some, yeah. some some cool background stuff. Uh, uh, Peter Jackson mentioned that nobody had ever, they didn't really know what Minas Morgul should look like because nobody had ever illustrated it before or drawn what. Like they had a bunch of concepts of what every place had ever looked like because fan art or because of drawings and paintings and shit like that but this place had never really been drawn so it was kind of the, up to them to concept mm -hmm. what it should look like and also the witch king's helmet uh initially looked too much like sauron's in the beginning where mm -hmm. sauron just has like the spires the coming up cool. and so they had uh they had weta completely redesign um the witch kings because it looked too similar to sauron Dude, and people were getting nailed it. confused that Helmet looks so cool. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah. It's very cool. Real quick, while we're talking about stuff, I want to just talk shit about the Gondor helmets because they don't work. Like, I don't know if you ever looked at the design because they have the little cone right here, right? Oh, right. And yeah, then right. they've got a little guard thing, but the guard thing can't go up because the cone blocks it. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of people you know in chat I mean, uh, um, complimenting Elise saying, adjust, adjust point, my liege. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you for addressing me in such, such a cadence as well. Yeah, but they didn't pay you the respect of calling you by your full name, which is Legolese, and everyone should know yeah. that. Right now. It's Tim, uh, Tim, Tim Lee, Legolese, uh, Kevin Wise, Gamagee, and then we've got, are you Eric? What are you, Andy, Andy Gordon? Andy Gordon. And then I'm just Nick. What's up, guys? Nick the pony. <laughs> Doing the plot. Doing the plot. Uh, of course, of course uh, Frodo's drawn. This is how this plays off. He's drawn for it until the thing shoots a big old beam up into the sky. And that's how, what I assume that beam is, is responsible for blacking out the sun. Um, and then the Nazgul king, uh, the, the witch king, rather, and all of the troops start flowing out. And so they decide to take the path. What, up the was the beam responsible for blocking out the sun? I thought that the volcano going crazy was blocking out the sun. I thought the I beam know. was just them flexing. Maybe like, oh, look at our big green beam, right? <laughs> you, you think it's the light at the, you think it's like the light at the Luxor Hotel in Vegas, where it's like oh, we can 100%. see the space, yep. but their slot machines suck. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. 
Uh, and then uh, Frodo and the gang start to climb uh, the, <laughs> the stairs toward the tunnel where nothing bad at all has ever happened. Uh, Sam pins Gollum against the, and, uh, against the rock and threatens him. He says, if anything happens to Frodo, you'll have to deal with me. Uh, and and Gollum, Gollum's like, dude, <laughs> I'm going to kill you both so quickly. Meanwhile, Gandalf sends Pippin on a secret mission as Faramir meets with his troops over in Os Giliath. Uh, one of the troops eats it with an arrow and Faramir figures out that the attack, the first attack is not going to come from the river like they thought. It's going to come, uh, excuse me, Will not come from the river, so he re repositions his troops to where uh, they, uh, to where all the things are actually coming from, uh, and everything goes weapons hot, baby. More orcs pile in uh, <laughs> as over in Minas Tirith, Pippin sneaks up to the tower where they hold the beacon of a Amon Din. Uh, he lights it half by accident and then climbs back down. Uh, Gandalf watches, of course, as in the horizons the other beacons see this beacon lit, and they start lighting the beacons themselves. And I mm -hmm. wonder what these poor assholes did to get these posts because so there's just two dudes up in the Andes being like, I'm freezing my ass off. Yeah. I should name two dudes that make the weapons. <laughs> they talk. They, yeah. Peter Jackson mentions like they, they like to imagine that there are people that it's sort of like a rite of passage for the youth that uh, uh, like you, you've been assigned to the beacon duty for three years or something like that. That's just like part of becoming in the military or whatever. Uh, real quick in Osgiliath, one of the guys who makes a command is J.R.R. Tolkien's grandson or great I think grandson actually. I think grandson. Um, and right? they don't really, yeah, because he mentions like, yeah, the Tolkien estate didn't really want a whole lot to do with us. And that's kind of known that the Tolkien estate doesn't really love the movies. And he was like, but when Fellowship came out, uh, Tolkien's grandson was like, yeah, these movies are okay. Can I can I go visit the set? And they were like, well, how about being the movie? And so they kind of like got together there or whatever. But uh, dude, Whoa. the Beacon stuff I think is like, it gives me chills every time. The music's so triumphant. Dude, it's so it's, it's so, cool. so hype. It's so cool. And I love it. I absolutely moment, love it. The moment where those guards are like, "Oh shit!" Like we fucked up. Like that should not be lit. You know? Yeah. And then, and then it, like, but yeah. it's too late. The chain reaction has started. Like you see the next one get lit, and then the next one, and it's like, "Whoa!" Yeah. People are guarding these things from here to the the whatever the the Rohan border. Yeah. And, and all and uh, and all of these scenes are completely practical except for fire a and sometimes and you the can posts. tell and you could tell yeah but like there's scenes where like uh, peter jackson's like yeah all the clouds you see on the surface everything here is all real this is all just helicopter uh cinematography and it's, Dude, it's incredible it's so cool i love this obviously it's hype as hell this is the, the type of stuff the tim gettys tm get hype i love it let's go and i love that it just, just goes one by one there is the the funny side of it i was like what if one group just missed it then it'd be so <laughs> fucked for every, everyone after that. Oh, yeah. This is another thing like the um, the issue I have of the the ghosts of the dead and all that stuff. It's like, I wish that we were more familiar with these places, that we knew where they were. And it's like, I know I'm now comparing this to something like Game of Thrones that had literally 80 hours to deal with. And it's not, even this is long, but it's not that long. But it's like, it would have been nice to know these areas and like be like, oh my God, they got those guys and those guys and those guys. This is just oh. kind of like, oh, here's a mountain. And here's a field and here's a this and it's cool but it's just like for how much i've invested into this series and how many like random things they have introduced this just kind of felt like there's more instead of oh shit it's them too yeah, yeah but i feel like the only other city we've seen right now is obelisk or whatever the hell it was called and like that's taken like over by orcs yeah like, yeah you know the this scene just has like so much scope and and the, when the music swells it's like it's majestic it's awesome and like to what you're saying tim I think it would be awesome to know what these posts correlate to. But I also, to me, some when I watch the scene, some of what I love about it in terms of like the dedication, the dedication of these people being connected to support one another and fight against any possible uh, like threat that might pose itself is that I imagine that some of these posts don't even have like cities attached to them or anything. It's just that the people manning them have taken up this sworn duty to know that if there was danger, they would be there prepared to light this beacon that serves in a chain with no other purpose than to to be part of this system it's of, so cool like, and, it's and such that, a cool like, concept goosebumps. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's like cool. the yeah. idea that like it hasn't been used for yeah so so long but these people are still taking the role manning their posts yeah. yeah and also shout out to that one shot that is like it like peeks over the clouds and yeah. it's one mountain tip and then you see in the distance another mountain tip and it lights up Very and it's cool. like 
Oh, so good. It's incredible. Uh, the beacons course, are lit. Gondor calls for aid. Incredible, <laughs> dude. So, of course, that is the next part. Aragorn is the one to spot the beacons, and he runs back in to tell Theoden, screaming, the beacons of Minas Tirith are lit. Gondor calls for aid, and Theoden thinks for a second and then says, and Rohan will answer. Dude, oh, baby. Another like, amazing on, scene baby. where everyone goes silent, and they all look at, at, at Theoden, and they're just like, hmm. And he's like, <laughs> we're doing this. And it was yeah, like, yeah, like, we're oh. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, Theoden assembles his army as he gives orders for his lieutenants to summon every able bodied person they can find. Uh, and then we get another moment with Eowyn where uh, she was like, uh, she tells Ar- Aragorn she's going with the women. But Aragorn's like, no, you're not. I know, I know exactly what you want and that you absolutely should go do that. Uh, Mary pledges his sword to Theoden, who accepts and gives him the role of Esquire of Rohan uh, as they ride out to battle. Eomor decri- uh, uh, excuse me, Eomor decrees, now is the hour, riders of Rohan. Oaths you have taken now. Fulfill them all to lord and land. Uh, back over at Faramir's uh, battle, Faramir's men are being overrun, so he orders the retreat back to Minas Tirith. No sooner does he uh, the order fall uh, does he uh, order the fall back than the Nazgul fly in and start chasing them. Uh, Gandalf spots that, so he and Pippin ride out to help the retreating men, and Gandalf uses the light from his staff to ward off the Nazgul. This is an awesome visual moment. That shot uh, is incredible. Like on really, the really ground, cool. the sweeping shot, and you see Minas Tirith in the back. Like it's it's so perfect, dude. Uh, back at Minas Tirith, Faramir spots Pippin, and from the look on his face, uh, Gandalf can tell that he's seen hobbits before, so he had, he cops up to the fact that Frodo and Sam were there. Uh, they've headed for the pass of Sirith Ungul, and to which Gandalf's like, ooh, not that one, that's bad, I know that one, that's got a big spider thing in it or something, I don't know, future no. spoilers. Uh, oh, Faramir comes clean to Denethor, and the old man freaks out, he says the ring should have been brought back here and used only as a last resort, but Faramir tells him that he'll, he was like, you, you don't understand, and even if I had this ring, I would never use it, even if I was the last p- person standing to defend Gondor, I would not put this ring on, um, and he goes, uh, it, it, we get the, we get the picture of that, he's like, well, he's like, I wish, I, I get the, I get the feeling that you wish that we had switched places, that, uh, that I had been dead and Boromir had been alive. And he's like, yeah, I do. Dude, yeah. like, Damn, every, every time he does it, it, it's fucked up, man. It hurts so my feelings, you know what I mean? Fenrir, and he's just he's just a nice guy. You don't even know his name. It's Faramir. <laughs> what? No, I was pretty close. I was pretty Fenrir, close. Fenrir's the way dog from Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> Uh, of course, there's oh, a, a weird part where as he's talking about all this, uh, Denethor looks over the shoulder of Faramir, and we get a weirdly composited shot of Boromir oh walking forward God. in slow motion. Extended I scene. From, I think it's from a, a shot. Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's from a uh, Vidal Sassoon hairspray <laughs> commercial that Sean Bean did in 1989. Is that correct? It's, it's funny. When this scene happened, Peter Jackson says, yes, there was a group. There was a large group of women on set that were so in love with Sean Bean, we called them the Bean Stalkers, oh um, and that they were like just so happy to have Sean Bean for one last shot, <laughs> like in this That's movie. Cool. Dude, it looked like a TikTok. It's an extended. It's an extended <laughs> scene. Yeah. Like, it, it's, to, it's supposed to show that like his brain is not working right. You know, it's not that. Well, we get not, that, but also not in the, yeah, not in the theatrical version. Uh, yeah. There's this wonderful, funny meme, and it's uh, it's supposed to be like you know uh, this the the memory of like Faramir and Boromir uh, winning the battle and Denethor is like proudly showing it off. And he says, this is my son Boromir and his friend. <laughs> um, like, so like, oh no! Uh, back over with the hobbits, we catch up with Frodo and Sam as they keep climbing. Hey, at least he's not walking. And when Frodo almost falls, Smeagol saves Frodo. him and uses. Yep. Excuse me, Frodo almost falls. He, uh, he Smeagol saves him and uses this as an opportunity to start turning him against Sam. He tells him that Sam has secretly wants the ring, and pretty soon he's going to offer to carry it for you. And we're like, man, maybe this little dude's smarter than he looks. Uh, Pippin and Faramir have a good moment. Uh, over Pippin wearing his uh, Faramir's younger outfit. And I don't believe this was in the theatrical release. This has to be extended shit. Uh, He's like, it never fit me either. Boromir was always the soldier, not him. Uh, Pippin officially then swears his fealty uh, with love, valor, and honor, disloyalty with vengeance. He makes Faramir go, uh, sorry, he swears his fealty to uh, Denethor. And then Denethor makes Faramir go back to Os Gilead. Just uh, go to his death, pretty much. Retake the city, basically. And he says, this is where he says, you wish now that our places has been exchanged, that I had died and Boromir had lived. And he says, yes, I wish that. Sorry, Elise, what were you saying? So, so for like Nick, Tim, Kevin, when you guys have that moment, you see, you hear Pippin swearing his fealty to Denethor. Like, what was your reaction? I, Denethor was so excited about it. Or he was just like, oh, <laughs> like, good. And it's just like, oh, no, don't do this. Yeah. 
I don't know. It's weird. And like all the stuff that it kind of leads to with like the food and the singing and stuff. I'm like, it's the best scene in the trilogy. I love this. I, so I, I, oh, I no, love for this. Me, love my heart or... just sinks every time. Every time he swears fealty to him, I just go. Oh. Yeah, I just I think this is like the one of my favorite scenes in like any movie of of the writers going out to their death, knowing they're going out to their death. And sing me a song, Pippin. And then Pippin starts singing. And an oh, interesting yeah, part of yeah, interesting yeah. Uh, trivia, uh, they all went to a karaoke night and heard him sing, Pippin the actor. I, f- I already forget his name. Um, John Ham, actually. It was John And Hammond. we're like, whoa, he can fucking sing. We have to use this. Wait, didn't he sing and- in one of the other movies? No, mm, like they, they, this one a little bit. They, 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 know, the, the, the they use the his, table. Uh, for the Hobbit. They use him singing. Basically, this singing oh, wouldn't have happened had they not gone to karaoke and heard him sing. And they just took some passage from Lord of the Rings, some random like poem line or whatever, gave it to him uh, and were like, come up with something. And he had a day to come up with it. And he wrote this song and like saying the melody and everything it's so good i love all of this it's incredible. that's weird yeah I, I don't know it didn't buy it it felt forced and like kind of corny to me like i liked i get it and i liked the scene of them all like going but so i do have a question here and i, I forgot to read this earlier return of the king's widely regarded as one of the greatest and most influential films ever made the film uh received numerous accolades at the 76th academy awards it won all 11 awards for which it was nominated Best Picture, Best Director, Adapted Screenplay, Art Direction, Costume Design, Film Editing, Makeup, Original Score, Original Song, Sound Mixing, and Visual Effects. Uh, therefore tying for the record of most Academy Awards by a single film. Um, was I this the original know. song? I don't know. I have Into no the idea. West is what it's called. I have no idea. It was good. But while um, you're looking at that, I'm going to finish the plot and option of the scene because there's a really poignant moment here where he says, uh, this is where he says you wish that now that our place has been exchanged. Yes, I wish that. And then he says, since you were robbed of Boromir, I will do what I can in his stead. If I should return, think better of me. And his dad says, or that will depend on the matter of your return, which is oh, just a guy. fucked up thing to sell someone. Uh, while the hobbits sleep, Gollum plants some breadcrumbs on Sam and throws the rest of the llamas <laughs> bread off the cliff. Uh, Sam <laughs> discovers that the elven bread is gone and accuses Gollum, but Frodo comes to to his d- defense, uh, Smeagol conveniently points out that Sam has crumbs all over him, and Sam loses his shit and starts beating his ass. Uh, Sam tells Frodo that the ring uh, has worn him down and offers to carry it for him, and then Gollum's word, words echo in his ears, and Frodo sends Fran, uh, Sam packing, uh, and this scene is very, very, very sad, so uh, so, so Sean Austin uh, uh, gets to cry. Ashton gets to cry. Um, Gandalf. Elise, Elise, it looked like you had thoughts. What are your what are your thoughts? No, I'm sorry. I just it's just Gollum framing Sam with crumbs is just like Art. it's never not funny to me. It's never not funny. It's it's <laughs> definitely funny, and it's one of those. It, this is one of those weird moments, the stage play moments that I had, where I'm watching this. I'm like, this is fucking stupid. Like, I can't buy this. There's nothing about this. The crumbs is funny, and I get it, and like I can understand. Uh, Gollum thinking it's a good idea. There's no I, way Frodo's going to believe this. No, There's but no, no way. But Frodo, in Frodo's, Frodo's so corrupted already. I get it. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and and that's exactly it. When you look at it like a stage play of, okay, he's corrupted and this is happening and this is why this is, it's like, cool. But when you're just looking at it, you're like, nah. I the don't seeds have been planted. The crumbs have been planted already. Yeah, <laughs> Damn. Just, like him having the conversation with himself. Like, oh, we yes, the crumbs. Almost <laughs> 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 threw in the, his body with the crumbs while he sleep. Uh, you know, back over. So funny to me. Back over at Minas Tirith, uh, G- uh, Gandalf tries to stop Faramir from riding to his death, but to no avail. He says, "Where does my allegiance lie if not here? This is the city of the men of Numenor." I would gladly give my life to defend her beauty. Uh, and then Gandalf says, your father loves you, Faramir. He will remember it before the end. Uh, Denethor, of course, asks, this is where he asks him to, to sing the song. And I do love how this is cut because we don't really get, we don't get a lot here. We just see them riding out in slow motion. And then we see the orc being like, what the fuck? So and then solid, they ride more. And then he's like, hey, guys, let's shoot these guys. And then they just un- unceremoniously kill this entire line of riders, which it's- is really, really sad. It's crazy that no one stops this. You know, no this one. This is incredible. Can. Like yeah. again, this is like I love all of this. I, I love the uncomfortable visuals of the tomato popping and the food and like. Yeah. It's just it's so. I think it's just so perfectly well this, shot and everything. This always makes me want to eat cherry tomatoes in my hands. It's gross. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Theoden, I just, uh, it looks like up. such a good way to eat it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we grapes. 
We catch up with Theoden uh, and uh, as they ride through the ranks uh, and get updates on his troop numbers. 6,000 Spears, that's less than half of what he had hoped. Uh, Gimli, of course, looks over and spots the road to Dimholt, uh, the door under the mountain, which nobody has ever come back from. Uh, guess it's a, one of those cool one-way doors, Andy, where you go in and then it locks behind you like concert cool. doors. Uh, but Aragorn is transfixed by it. He knows that's where his fate lies. Uh, we have another scene here with Eowyn, uh, where she dresses Mary for his role as an esquire. His blade is dull, so she sends him off to the smithy. I like how they say smithy. You got to go see the Smithy. I was like, we call them the Aerosmith, okay? Because they're a dope rock man. Aomir uh-huh. uh, gives... Joke. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, man. good job. Uh, bitch. <laughs> uh, Aomir gives him shit, and he says, "I, I don't." And and uh, Aowen says, "Why are you, why are you giving him shit?" And he's like, "Listen, I don't doubt his heart, but just the reach of his arm." And as they talk, I like how this scene is written, and I like how it's directed because he's not really talking about uh, uh, Pippin here, right, or Mary here. He's actually more referring to the fact that he knows that his cousin wants to fight, uh, and he's saying basically, "War is the province of men." Aowen is what he tells her, which basically means like, "This is this is man work. You can't be a part of it." And to which he's like, "Oh, I'll fucking show you." you um because everyone should be able to fight if they want to fight uh but and then uh, uh then we have a, a moment where aragorn dreams about arwen uh and as a cloaked figure we see a cloaked figure kind of riding down the mountain and then the dream of course culminates with him dropping evans even star onto the ground as it shatters uh and then that night he's woken up and he's summoned to king theoden's uh, little cool tent uh but when he gets there he discovers it's not arwen the cloak it's actually elrond uh, he's come on behalf of arwen who is dying uh as i Sauron. was shocked you guys what shocked. a bummer of a surprise you know we all thought dude here's the thing i was literally like like hitting gia on the arm just like oh shit here we go and like we had and he takes off I'm like what the fuck like i did not expect it at all to be you <laughs> Yeah, it's good, though. It's a good reveal because uh, he says, you know, as Sauron's power grows, her light fades. Basically, like, if you don't win this war, she's going to die because she is committed to you. And that's uh, and, and the, her her spirit is intrinsically tied for some reason to the power of the ring and all in Sauron's power. But why? Uh, yeah, I was so this, about to this, ask this that, too. This totally lost me where I was just like, yeah. wait a minute. Why is she dying now? Like, I know she was going to die, but like. That just means she's mortal now. That That's yeah, really like, all. It's. It, I think it's just him, oh, like being overreactionary and kind of over exaggerating. Like oh, okay. she's dying now. It just means that like she's mortal now. She'll. She'll. She's gonna mm. die soon. Okay. Like, so. So basically, if we don't soon win this could war, be a hundred years gonna die, and she's gonna die. Basically. Yeah. I. That's okay. what gotcha. I think. That's, okay. I, okay. I, 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 no, I don't I think she's like suddenly he... infected by some poison or anything. Got I think. It. It but just, doesn't he like yeah. clarify and, and and kind of imply that that she is like connected to everything and like she's dying. No. I think I think Andy's right. I think it was hyperbole. I think it's like, like if a kid moves away is... to a, to a community college an hour away, and his mom's like, "My son is moving away." It's like, "Mom, I'm a fucking hour away. Chill out." You know what I mean? Like, it's very similar to that. Oh, dude, that's that, that makes more sense. Like saying her fate is tied with the ring is basically saying her fate's tied with humanity, which is tied into the ring. So basically, if we want to destroy that ring, we're gonna everyone's gonna die. I'll, let's take it at face value because to me, Dickens... I can read it as like, "Wow, there's some weird magical power over her that's gonna that's killing her if the ring survives." But well, no, but like Mc yeah, Dickens so... in the chat says it, it cut to her being ill, didn't it? I see. Yeah. I remember that too. I thought so I too. Think, but I think that was the el- the elder power like leaving her body and her I... becoming mortal. That's what I read. Yeah, I always wondered if it was something to do with like elves are sensitive to dark magic. I, th- or something. I thought so too. Sauron's power is growing. Like that's having a negative effect on her. I always well, assumed I it was know. like this giant, the like the big cloud that he's doing to um, protect his his orcs was negatively affecting the elves hmm. because they well, we'll find out night, maybe I don't know. <laughs> We'll find out next week from the Lord of the River Dance facts when he gets back to us and tells us what we got wrong in this yeah. episode. <laughs> uh, but as we move forward, of course, uh, Elrond tells him about a secret force that will attack Gondor from River. Uh, we're outnumbered. We need more men. And he said, he's like, uh, uh, his, uh, wait, oh, there you go. The, there are none there. And then basically Elrond's like, you know what you got to do. There's, there are a bunch of guys. Those are the ones that dwell in the mountain. And he goes, murderers, traitors. They believe in nothing. They will answer to no one. And he says, they will answer to the king of Gondor. And then, man, oh. it's almost like Elrond gets it. Like, he's like, I get to choose when things go slow-mo. And yeah. this is a slow-mo moment. Because he, like, <laughs> whips out. Uh, Andy, how do you say the name of the sword? Andril? Uh, it's, right? it's 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 forged from, like, the flames of Andor. It's the shards of not a sea. So they call it's it the so flame cool. of the west. He yeah. get, and the name of the sword is Andril, forged Andrew, from the shards yeah. of Narsil. Uh, Elrond tells him to put uh, aside the ranger and become the man he was born to be. Take the Dim Holt Road and go get you an army, son. My, my cousin has the Andril sword. It's so fucking sick, dude. It's the I like how you. Ever. I love when you say when everyone says words 
in this world, you put like five more vowels in there. And I well, no, 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 I think that, I, I mean, El, Elrond always like, he says Mordor, you know, like you always have to roll the R's. There's like five R's. But it sounds it. like uh, it, he rolls it so hard. It sounds like every R is an L. Yeah. It's very bizarre. And it's not just him. Gandalf well, he's does not, it too. He's not, they're not saying it in English, right? Like Mordor is a word in, in what's the dark language or yeah, oh, the black tongue or black, black speech, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like, it's got more yeah. accents and weird little flourishes over the E's yeah. and stuff. Weird really umlauts. <laughs> umlaut. Uh, so, Aragorn knows what he has to do, of course. Uh, he and uh, before he leaves, Eowyn pleads for him to stay one last time. She basically says she loves him, and he says, I cannot give you what you seek. I can't love you. I have to go do this thing, and, and that's that's it for their relationship. Uh, of course, he tries to sneak out, but who should spot him, Tim? That's right. Gimli and Legolas are like, yo, what are you doing? Where are you going, bro? And he's like, I gotta go do this thing. And he's like, man, and I love this. Legolas, Legolas says, have you learned nothing about the stubbornness of dwarves? And then they go, you might as well accept it. We're going with you. Ride together. We're going with you, laddie. Die yeah. together. <laughs> Fuck yeah, baby. Bro, I'm gonna life. say it though. They were useless on this mission. Like they didn't, they didn't help at all. You know what I mean? Like they they just go, they're like, hey, we're yeah, gonna but hang go, out with you instead. Going to a instead they, gonna, going to a scary place with friends is a lot easier. It's you true. know? I, yeah, it's like, I guess, right. but. I keep trying to get Andy. James and I really want Andy to watch do watch party of La Llorona with us. Oh, and we text him like once a week, asking he won't do it. We <laughs> well, say we can watch during the day. Did you say party of yeah. watch party? Like a do like watch a watch party. party. Oh, I think yeah. you said instead of curse of La Llorona, party <laughs> party of La Llorona. <laughs> it would be if we were heard all of? watching it together. Uh, <laughs> hey guys, I think, uh, I think during we got about two years left on this quarantine, so I think we'll convince him. <laughs> we'll get him. Uh, uh, Gamlin watches, of course, as Aragorn is leaving, and he can't understand why. And then Theoden tells him that the troops. He's like, he's like, where's he going? We need him. We need everyone. And Theoden is like, listen, man, we can't win this, but that doesn't mean we ain't gonna fight. And Gamlin's like, that didn't help. That makes me scared, more scared. Why didn't uh, uh, Why didn't they tell everyone like, oh, hey, we're gonna go see if we can get more people? Like, instead, I don't think he wanted to. I don't think he wanted to give them hope because I think he was like, I so don't instead, know what's there. He and gave them like, fear okay. of like everyone's like, oh, I I guess they're just leaving. I don't know. Good that point. seems like the the opposite to do right before a battle, of like, hey, these three people who are like really, really good at Pivotal. fighting, yeah, and like important, are just leaving. Uh, before that, uh, before we catch back up with Aragorn, of course, we have a good thing with Theoden and Eowyn, where he says basically, look, I'm putting you in charge. If I die, you're in charge of all this. And she's like, uh, I'm gonna go fight. So basically, like, I don't care. Like, there's. I got other shit I want to do with my life. Uh, down on the trail of Dimholt, Legolas tells the story of the Forgotten People. This is where we get a backstory of this. And this is a weirdly shot moment that I thought was a little TNT, but doesn't matter. Uh, and they're an army who swore an oath to the previous king to fight. But when they were went back on their oath, they were cursed never to rest until they fulfill their pledge. And I believe that prior king was Isildur, right? Yeah, that's fine. I'll, we'll just yeah. go with that. Uh, yeah, he yeah. tells of the coming of the one who will release them, who shall call them from the gray twilight, the Forgotten People, the heir of him to whom the oath they swore from the north he'll come uh need shall drive him he'll pass to the door uh to the paths of the dead and i'm like you say a lot of cool stuff here basically like aragorn's gonna frame uh they get to a really really scary door and aragorn heads in uh followed closely by uh legolas and then shortly after there gimli see shortly <laughs> see what i did there at least <laughs> ah, <laughs> funny, funny. Okay, no. uh back over wherever the hell mary is he wants to fight but theoden tells him no uh he's like it's a three-day ride and none of my riders can bear your burden of course he's scooped up immediately by eowyn because she's like i ain't having this shit you're going we're riding into this battle together they can't keep us from fighting uh and she pledges uh she's she's well uh, that's it uh as they make their way of course deeper into the mountain aragorn legolas and gimli uh legolas tells gimli the dead have been summoned uh, a thick fog rolls in the floor shrouding their way uh as a ghostly hand start to reach out and i'm like is this the haunted mansion ride from <laughs> disneyland uh of course they tell gimli don't look down because he hears crunching and when he does look down he sees that the, the floor beneath them is paved with skulls uh and they crack a lot as the dwarf walks and i was like i don't like that sound as they approach another really, really big door, the king of the dead stops him and says, who enters my domain? Aragorn responds, one who will have your allegiance. The king says, the dead do not suffer the living to pass. And Aragorn looks him straight in the eyes and says, you will suffer me. And it's dope. And from now on, whenever I say, Andy, do you want to go to lunch? He says, oh, man, I got too much words to do. I'm going to say, you will suffer me. <laughs> oh, so I don't really will. know what that he means, but it's will. cool. Uh, the king of the dead calls his army to surround them. He says, the way is shut. It, it was made by those who are dead, and the dead keep it. And they say, uh, the way is shut. Now you must die. Of course, Legolas tries to shoot an arrow into the king, but it goes right through him to no, to no avail. 
And uh, Aragorn says, I summon you to fulfill your oath. And he says, none but the king of Gondor may command me. And Aragorn salutes him because he knows what's coming next. And as the king uh, raises his sword, he brings it down on Aragorn, who meets it with Andoril, stopping the blow dead in its tracks. And uh, the king is mystified. He says, the line was broken. And Aragorn looks right back at him, grabs his throat, and says, it has been remade. Fuck. Yes. Yeah. That is some what shit right there. Wait, wait the, the line is what broken. The, he said the line the line of kings has been broken basically yeah. it says it's been remade. basically we remade the sword i'm reclaiming my my line mm. my bloodline it's all been it's remade tight. you will be you're on my ass right now let's go on my six on my six army of the dead and he yeah. says what he says basically calls him out he says what uh he uh he says i am is the heir fight for me and i will hold your oath fulfilled uh and instead of an answer of course the king just laughs and he's like oh i guess that didn't work out and the army recedes as the everything starts crumbling skulls start pouring out all sorts of shit starts happening they run out uh, just in time, and when it, once they get out into the sunlight, of course, uh, they spot the uh, Saruman's navy uh, on the river below, coming forward. forward. Uh, crestfallen, Aragorn falls to his knees and weeps, but a sudden gust of wind behind him brings him back to his feet. As he turns, he spots the king of the dead, who appears from the rocks behind him, and he says, we fight. And it's on, baby. Uh, so, back. Right. Hold on, real quick, I want to say the, the scene with the skulls all falling. I actually really liked how it looked, and it was very scary, but the one thing I kept thinking about is, like, you know how much it hurts when you get headbutted? Like yeah, it hurts a lot. Skulls yeah. hitting you, yeah. That, that's a lot of headbutts. Yeah. You know? During the but, during the making of uh, Fran, I believe one of the other writers uh, or Philip, I forgot, I forgot which one it was. Goes, uh, yeah, uh, where are all the arms and legs at? And Peter Jackson's like, <laughs> ah, yes, that's a uh, that's a good question. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> it was great. It was great. A, a really, skull really funny. way lighter with no brain in it. Yeah, sure. oh, like, yeah. it would hurt a lot less. Yeah. Like they only oh, weigh yeah. like maybe half, half a it's gram. It's like a shell hitting your head, you well, know, a conch. Not half a gram. Uh, back at me, <laughs> uh, troops drag Faramir's dead body or, or body back into the Citadel. Uh, when he, when they get it up to uh, to Denethor, he weeps at the sight of his dead son. And he's like, oh, my blood, li- my, my, my line is dead. My bloodline is dead. Uh, overrun with grief. He heads to the balcony walls where he sees the massive army down below who BTWR have now started catapulting the head, the heads, the dead heads of Faramir's fallen soldiers over the wall just to fuck with everyone. Love it's that. Terrifying. It's such a, um, like, it reminds me of Game of Thrones. Obviously, like, this came before Game of Thrones, but I just love the release the prisoners or whatever. It's yeah. such a cool, like, scary, uh, like, yeah, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're capable of kind of moment. Super messed up. Uh, of course, Pippin yells at him and try to reason with him. He says, Faramir's not dead. He just needs help. Like, he's still alive. And then others like, nah, man, he's gone. He's like a Gatorade yeah, or something. He's, he's dead. Know? He's dead. Uh, and so he starts yelling for everyone to abandon their posts. He's like, get out. Go, run for yourself. Abandon ship. Get out for yourself. And this is, w- this is where Gandalf's like, I've had enough. And just straight knocks him out. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, hey, I, if, yeah. if this was your tactic, this Gandalf, awesome. why didn't you do this like a day ago? Yeah, In the, uh, I feel yeah. like at, at this point, if he does that, like the people that are there are just gonna be like, "All right, cool." Whereas, and if he'd done this a day ago, they would have been like, "Oh, gotta kill you. This is our job. We gotta protect our king." You know what I mean? In the uh, in the making of Fran, uh, Fran Walsh goes, "This was kind of weird. I never knew how I was gonna feel about this about Gandalf just hitting him because it never happened in the book." And Peter Jackson's like, "Yeah, it's not very Tolkien." Like, this yeah. isn't a very Tolkien moment, but it's such a movie moment. You know, this is like <laughs> the movie needed this. And they're like, and finally, when we saw, I was worried about how the crowd, how the fans were going to react to it. And when we were in theaters and people cheered, we we're like, all right, this is the right thing to do. We nailed it. It's <laughs> great. And you still want Gandalf to stand up to him of everyone, because yeah. I feel like Gandalf's pretty diplomatic a lot of the time. He's he's almost godlike. He doesn't want to interfere too much in the affairs of humans. But at this point he was like, sit down fucker. Yeah. Like <laughs> I'm tired of you. Uh, I love it. So much. Um, someone in the chat's calling me out for not saying the, what say you line. I, I did gloss over that. There's a great Same. moment where Adolf's like, Aragorn's like, I want you to basically fight for me and regain your armor. What say you, what say you? And they're all like, ah, we don't know until the king tells us what to do. <laughs> they reset back. It's a moment. Uh, of course, uh, after Wait, he knocks the, out Denethor, how do the ghosts work? Like, do they, they choose physical. when they're they're physical? I would. Yeah. Okay. I would try to. You know, it'd be cool if you scared another ghost. Like, if Andy was a ghost and I was a ghost, and I was like, ha! And he's like, oh, you got me again, man. It's it's forever. We're forever gonna be doing this. I wonder what their city <laughs> looks like. Let's move on. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. It's gonna, it's gonna be a race to see who dies first and can haunt the other one. Exactly. <laughs> I know I'm that haunt now. you, Andy. If I die first, I'm gonna haunt <laughs> your little it's room be, with all the chairs. It's gonna be terrible. Uh, Gandalf, of course, chairs. takes the reins and he orders the men to prepare for battle. He says, "Send those fool, those foul beasts into the abyss." And again, love the James Cameron reference here, Peter Jackson. I see what you're doing. Abyss, mm, great movie. Fair. 
Uh, <laughs> catapults start throwing, and Nazgul start screaming, Tim, the battle is mm -hmm. on. The orc army breaches the wall. Uh, they use those ladders to breach the wall, and Gandalf orders Pippin back into the Citadel. Thankfully, Pippin, of course, never listens to anything because as Gandalf starts dual wielding a sword and his staff, uh, he gets a little bit, uh, he starts knocking orcs out, but one of them gets the better of him, and then Pippin comes in and stabs him in the gut. And he's like, I did something right for once. And he's like, Good job, you stupid took. Now get back into the Citadel. Yeah. They're gonna get killed. Uh, of course, still having trouble beating the main door, the orc general orders them to bring in Grand. And he says, Grand, like Mikey, can eat anything. Grand can breach anything. And you think, and then he goes, Bring up the wolf's head. And at first, I was like, That's a dope name for a soldier. And then it cuts over to a giant steel wolf head with fire in its mouth. Oh, yeah. And that's where we're going to end today's <gasps> recap. It's so oh. bizarre because, like, they never really shot of this out in the theatrical moment uh, movie. It was just this there. new battering, it was just a battering ram. But in Wait, this they one, they call they it. do the wolf? No, they don't call it Grand or anything like that. They just say like, "Hey, hey, that big thing we're gonna use." Like they, they sort of embellish it and really, uh, um, like hype it up here, you know. Also, Nick, who's Mikey that will eat anything? Uh, that was an old commercial that where it's like, "Give it to Mikey, he'll eat anything." Yeah, Mikey, he'll eat anything. Kid. And then they actually redid the commercial where Mikey was female. Hey, they, Mikey, that's that's a, that's a current he commercial. Likes it. I think it's yeah. for uh, <laughs> life, corn, corn flake, life cereal. That's what it is. For cereal. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. So. Question for you guys. Sure. Who saw this in theaters? When you guys saw this in theaters, mm -hmm. was the how did people react to the Gandalf fight scene? Was it a Yoda type reaction? No. No. No, it was just I, like, I mean that as a positive. I mean that no. in a like, let's fucking go, or just kind of like all right, he's doing stuff. No, but also people I I mean, I don't really remember people cheering in theaters when I went to go watch this movie anyway. Yeah, it didn't it, I think it was like 2003. It was pre you know. Well, we we had Spider Man's coming out, but we didn't. It was pre, kind of pre the MCU. Yeah. Um. So it wasn't really like you cheered in theaters. Yeah. Not that I really remember going. When to Yoda pulled out his lightsaber in Episode Two, my theater went nuts. I, I feel like that I was. An, there it. were rare exceptions. That was like a moment. Star Wars. But, that was a but also, it was to be a fair, Star Wars. Remember, Tim? Everyone knows that Star Wars fans are just a lot more um, psychotic. Like Lord yeah. of the Rings, you're talking Lord of the Rings fans here, Tim. These are literary people, but here, smart people. Tim, they we would party not hard. Aim to, uh, they would they wouldn't want to disturb anyone else in the seat next to them by screaming at something. It's not going to happen. You also got to assume that you know we already saw Gandalf fight Saruman. Like we've already seen sort of his That's fighting. True. But there's a something about the shit. dual wielding and all. It's that cool. Shit. It's pretty cool. Seven syllables in the middle. You need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. I also have a theme for the MVP. <laughs> oh, that's that's some exciting stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form. Uh, Engine 25 says the king of the dead. Still the coolest thing ever. I love this movie. Uh, Chance Carter says two hobbits smoking long bottom leaf token black ball <laughs> pip stroking. <laughs> That's okay. the best one, man. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, Kebab says, Gondor's theme gives awe. Minas Tirith drops my jaw. Gandalf is the law. Uh, Josh C says, Sauron's end will come. Isildur's heir draws his sword. Return to the king. It's pretty good. It didn't rhyme. Didn't need it to didn't rhyme. rhyme. But, it's but cool. it was dope. I also liked in the movie, they said Return to the king. And I, I always yeah. appreciate those moments. Feels really cool. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rag Guys Talk Bad Guys here on In Review. Am I the only one that when they, when you hear Return of the King, you think Return of the Mac? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, as uh, as we keep going, actually, I don't think we have to do Rag Bag right now. because Oh, no, we did. I'm sorry. No, we're not doing Rag Bag. No, yeah, right? we do it next week. That's right. next week. That's right. Okay. Uh, my bad. Well, my bad. Andy? Give it to us. Who is the MVP? Is it this or that? I might disagree. Yeah, who is the MVP? Is it him or her? They're my nominee. Yeah, who's the MVP? Whoa. There it is. That was, that was powerful great. stuff. Thank you, Andy. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you very much for that. Guys, so we have the LVP, according to, to Kevin, as Pippin. I mean, am I wrong? Pippin sucks, right? <laughs> This isn't like a Gimli situation where someone's just nah, being Pippin's mean to great. a character. Him singing was incredible. I mean, yeah, I enjoyed him singing too, but like he also great caused moment. a lot of problems. Sure, he's kind of like the, he's kind of like Ron. Who has a nominee, 
No. Get out of here. For, that Ron shit. Ron. <laughs> no. For MVP? For MVP, I am going... Um, Dude, I'm going I'm, Sam. I'm go. No, Fenrir. Faramir. Yeah, that one. I'll go Faramir. There you go. Because yeah. he, like, he went out and fought this battle that he knew he was going to die. You know what I mean? He didn't die, but that's... He thought he was gonna die, and he took I'm all going with the sword. Them. Anduril, yeah, that's a good one, dude. That's my MVP. Oh, fuck me. I'm really feeling Gandalf, you know, because we got Gandalf unfiltered. I feel we like do. you say that every episode, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love Gandalf so much. At least we're getting we're getting a Gandalf after dark here. I kind of agree. We're getting him yeah. in his full force. So he's just like fuck it. I don't care anymore. I, I'm not gonna be diplomatic about <laughs> this. Gandalf and also, reloaded. and also, and also. Shadow Fact shows the meaning of haste. Like, what okay. a cool okay. line. That's a good line. <laughs> but, uh, I'm, with, I'm with Kevin and Faramir, and I'll tell you why. Because Faramir's sacrifice is the one is the thing that breaks Denethor, and allowing that to happen, G uh, Gandalf can then take over the battle and hopefully turn the tide for good. Sure. Um, well, what, do you mean, what do you mean by, like, breaks Denethor? Because to me, I saw it as Denethor, like, he doesn't care about his son anyway. He's so willing to sacrifice him, and his those tears are crocodile tears. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's not he's Oh, not it's all bullshit. Faramir. Yeah. I don't know. I always felt I, like that was his moment of like suddenly he's fully point, yeah. unhinged, you know? Like it, yeah. now now he is very clearly just talking nonsense to everyone in the room. And again, to like take down someone who's in like ruling, you have to be able to like prove that, you know what I mean? Jophias uh Tampita in the chat says, "Being fair, I didn't know the meaning of haste prior to Shadow Facts." But I think that alone makes Gandalf cool. the MVP. <laughs> All, right. All right. There it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will return for the final Lord of the Rings in review next Friday here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Remember, we are doing Star Trek Beyond on Tuesday. Exciting stuff all around. So much cool things here. But first. Slash kind of funny. Yes. Yes. But before we get to that, um, last week, Andrea Renee did not get to check in with the Hobbits because she was too busy doing some stuff. So we're getting a little extended cut, an extended edition of Andrea Renee's little bit here. Um, so until next week, we love you guys. We'll leave you with that. All right, guys, don't talk. Hey everybody, it's Andrea Renee for your kind of funny Lord of the Rings in review part one for the return of the king. Sorry I missed you last week for the Two Towers part two, but... Things just got hectic and I wasn't able to get a video together, but honestly it kind of worked out because the Hobbits don't really play a big part in part two of that film, which clearly focuses on the amazing battle at Helm's Deep. But now for part one, there's a lot of great moments. So I want to just highlight two quick ones. First, in the very beginning of the film, we see Marin, Marin? Mary and Pippin in Isengard after their victory with Treebeard and the rest of the Ents feasting and smoking. And what I think is really interesting about the smoking part is that we don't really get a glimpse from the films into like the long history about the South Farvine and the Long Bottom Leaf. We get to see people smoking in a couple occasions, but you don't really get to learn much about it. And just like a little anecdote, when I was a kid, my dad used to smoke loose leaf tobacco in like an actual pipe. And so I just assumed when I saw these movies that they're, they're just smoking regular loose leaf tobacco. And it wasn't until I got to be a lot older and I learned more about other kinds of wacky tobacco that that I distinctively saw the difference between the way Peter Jackson portrayed it in the films and the way that it's portrayed in the books. And I thought it was a really nice moment of Hobbit's really kind of embracing something that's from the Shire and something that's very stereotypical of them feasting and enjoying life. And I thought it was a really nice moment just to kind of see it and also like if you want to learn more about the weed of the Lord of the Rings, you can definitely check out, of course, the Lord of the Rings. Read it. Just just read it already. It's great. The other Hobbits being the Hobbits moment that I kind of wanted to highlight for part one of The Return of the King is the songs. So there's two songs that we really see here. We see Merry and Pippin at the Hornburg after their big celebration of their victory at Helm's Deep, having this really fun celebratory dance moment. And then we see a much more somber moment near the end in Minas Tirith where Pippin has stupidly pledged his service to Denethor, who was the steward of Gondor. And Denethor asked him to sing a song as he has sent his son Faramir essentially to death, right? Like, we don't know that Faramir is going to come back alive because it looks like there's an overwhelming orc force and Sauron is, like, ready to just, like, put his foot down on all of the creatures, human or otherwise, in Middle-earth. And so 
we get this really nice somber moment with Pippin singing the song The Edge of Night. And the reason I want to bring this up is because I think what's really wonderful about Tolkien embracing song and the verses of these songs and the books is that you get some really deep rich history about the importance of song in folklore and the importance of song in storytelling more importantly turns out we as humans didn't always have the internet and tiktok and you know time hop and everything else that allows us to remember instead a lot of our human history was passed down via song and that's what I think is so great about what Tolkien did in The Lord of the Rings is that he put these amazing songs with these great verses into the books. And I think Peter Jackson and the entire team that created The Lord of the Rings films did a wonderful job, really recreated them in a way as best they can because no one really wants to spend five minutes on a Hobbit song, right? Mm, Got to make it shorter. But I wanted to call it out because I think that they did a great job. And if you're like, why are these Hobbits always singing? It's because it's part of their culture and it's part of who they are as a people. And it's really part of our history as a human species that we pass our history down through song. And I just wanted to call that out because I thought it was a nice moment. And also Pippin did a great job. Good job, Pippin. You're a good singer. Um, I can't believe that we've been through so many hours of the Lord of the Rings already and that it's coming to a close next week. But I hope that you guys have enjoyed this all so far and I hope that you have a great weekend. I'll see you soon. Bye everybody.